Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a very special, special, special <laughs> guest, Mr. <laughs> Solomon Aga is with us. How are you? Doing good. You're good. Yeah. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, man. Dude, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I watched a lot of your episodes. Mm -hmm. I can't say I've seen all of them. What? But... <laughs> We haven't seen all of them here. <laughs> I've watched a lot of them. Nice. And uh, it's impressive. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. To say the least. I mean, uh, how are you not, how are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've had Great every question. single person in skateboarding in this studio. We're still amazing. missing a lot, there's though. There's so many. Yeah. We're still missing so many. We yeah. talk about that all the time. Yeah, there's still a lot. Yeah, that have to come I, through these I know. doors. And, yeah, there are. There yeah. are. There's people that I've thought of, man, that'd be cool if that person got on there because we could hear about their story or even right. people that i grew up with and that i know mm. totally. yeah. i mean yeah, your yeah. your episode's gonna be 265 oh so like that's 265 people right yeah. that's I a think lot. i weighed 265 <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you make pizza <laughs> your primary <laughs> dietary uh concern hey, it's good pizza though yeah. was, that in, was that in pizza. your like experimental days when you were trying to get the get oh the my god yes ingredients yes. right and everything i'm in the shop every day so i'm like eating pizza and we're trying different stuff and then i like to eat anyway you know <laughs> okay so um and then we started doing this day old thing where we do oh, day old yep. slices oh, for yeah. a dollar mm -hmm. and so i'm eating cold pizza in the morning hot <laughs> pizza at noon and then Oh shit! There's pizza left over, so I now I have to eat that pizza, so it don't go to waste, you know, or whatever. So yeah, I got up there, man. Really? And I remember one day I was skating home. I lived around the corner in the lofts, you uh -huh. know, from downtown LA, and I just remember skating home. You know, it's about a hundred feet from the shop, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm skating. I'm going down the street, and I'm getting close to the curb, and I'm like. I wonder if I can even ollie up that right now. Like, that's how I felt, you know? Wow. And I did make it up the curb, but okay. the fact that that was a... Crossed your mind? like was, that, that was an indicator that something's mm. going to change. Mm. <laughs> like, I almost could... I'm, I, had to I might eat shit, like, going yeah. up this curb right now. Right. Like, I had to think right. about this. Yeah. So, so what did you do going forward? Did you uh, have to... question. Yeah. Yeah, so diet, I ended up... Diet pizza? Yeah. Diet yeah. Pizza. <laughs> Air pizza. Air pizza. <laughs> um, so I... Uh, a friend of mine, he was doing, he got interested in running marathons and uh, his, he has a parent that died of AIDS. Mm. And so he wanted to um, run a marathon to raise money mm -hmm. for AIDS research and whatnot. And we were talking about it and I said, I'm going to do that too. I'll do that with you. Okay. You know, so I never run before in my life and you know, when I was in high school or whatever, you know, we were supposed to run around the track, you know, and there's bleachers and I'd be back there smoking cigarettes, you know, oh, while everyone's <laughs> running, you know, just, you know, in PE I class? was definitely not running <laughs> around the track. Um, yeah. In PE. Yeah. And, uh, Amazing. so I, I did do that and I got on the Nike, had an app, you know, where mm -hmm. you just tell them what your, uh, I guess what your experience is. I was a novice or a beginner. And then it would plan out a run schedule for you. Oh. And, it, and then you would follow that until the day of the marathon. And I did that. Oh, wow. wow. So I started doing that. And I remember it was about 4.30 in the morning. And I come out of the loft. I got my gear on. I'm like, you know, feeling good. Ready. I'm out there. I got my headphones. I'm running. And I'm, you know, and I get about, I don't know half a mile into it and i'm like what the hell am i doing like, <laughs> what do i think i'm doing i cannot i don't know how to run you know i start walking i'm like this is insane and uh i just kept doing it that was the first day that you, was you the got first it. day and wow. it was raining and it was just awful you know the whole first experience was really um how can i say this it was discouraging mm, yeah. i can see that so but i just was like, okay, what to say the next day? <laughs> so what do I got to do? So I just kept following that. And, and eventually I was running 10, 12, 13, 15, 16, 20 miles. Wow. wow. You know? And it took about, you know, it took a few months, but you know, I got to the point where I could, you know, I would work at the shop all day, get off at midnight, and then I would go for a 10 mile run. 
at yeah. midnight. Yeah. yeah. In downtown LA? Yeah, yeah all over LA. Yeah. Wow. That's 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 a cool thing for me though too, is like Whoa. being in LA, I there are parts of LA I'd never seen before. And you sure. just don't see that when mm-hmm. you're driving or from spot to spot or whatever. You just you just don't see so So wait, let me get this right. The app sets up like a routine for you? Pretty much. Yeah. What That's about amazing. a route? Yeah, the route. No like, route. No, no route. route. No okay. route. No. No, you just do your own route, but it sets up a training schedule. Okay. So it's like, you know, you're going to run two miles today. You're, you're going to skip a day, run three miles. Mm, uh, okay. Skip a day, run one mile. You know, so it just kind of oh, takes you through. So your progression is just getting exactly. more and more. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're conditioning yourself for a race. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't go out in that race. Like it was your first day coming out, <laughs> get, getting with your stuff oh, on already. Oh yeah, I know. Well, how long oh. was the race? What, what, how many miles? It was twenty six point two. It was 26. a full. Okay. It was the LA Marathon. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I ran the LA Marathon in two thousand eleven. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So did you have to stop eating pizza then, or did you keep eating pizza? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I don't remember exactly what I did for my diet, but you know, I was running so much that it really didn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to the point where I, like none of my runs were less than 10 miles, you know, I yeah. was doing wow. long, you know, you're doing these long runs, you know? Amazing. Yeah. I will say yeah. this, you guys have really good salads. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I, I usually get the salad when I go there. Yeah, but thanks, yeah. Man. It's, about it's a pizza place. I, I know, but they have good salads. <laughs> I'm saying yeah. it gives you options, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's good. No, we pride ourselves on everything that we make. I mean, the <clears> salads, are, all the produce is organic. We make all the dressings. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Oh, in-house, yeah. 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 So we make everything. Okay. You know, Love so uh, the salads are good. Wow. Do you guys do salad pizza? Um, you know, it's an option. We don't really promote it. I know, I think mm. Abbott's down here. Yeah, does they, that in they, Venice they, Beach. But, mm. Um, mm. you know, if you want to throw your salad on your pizza, we <laughs> We won't complain. Yeah. <laughs> or if you want us to throw it on there for you, we can do that. That's the a, problem is, you know, salad is uh, typically served cold, mm. and then pizzas are hot. Soggy. So, like, all that heat coming up on the salad is not great. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're um, it's like you're wilting it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, you're ruining your salad. Right. Yeah. So, so Pizza Nista, I mean, how, did you, how long have you guys been in business? The first shop in uh, downtown L.A.? Yeah, so it's 13 years. 13? Year. Wow. Yeah. That's so crazy, wow. man. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Definitely. And Big you guys are, have, what, four or five shops? Yeah, so we, have, we had a store in Long Beach that closed, mm, you know, so okay. that was during the pandemic. And just... I had partners and, you know, we split up. And mm. so that was part of that okay. deal, you know, so it was time to kind of move on from there. And we owned the property and that had to get, Ooh, that's you know, so that all had to get sorted out in the deal. And then uh, what happened next? We moved to black. Oh, yes. you know, for yeah. For a period that, of time. Right, but it was right. really challenging for us and them because there was a lot of kind of, um, you know, the whole social unrest in California, I mean, mm-hmm. really the world, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. California sure. specifically, so, or, or the United States. So, uh, we just had a hard time with opening and closing and all that. So uh, we just decided to one day, we thought it would be best to teach them how to make pizza. So oh, when their bar could be open, they could just ha- they needed food in order to stay open. So I was like, you know, we'll, we'll, get you a deal on the equipment we'll teach you how to do what we do okay. and then you guys can do it moving forward. so it's their own thing it's not pizza nista now yeah. it's just their own okay yeah. and, okay and you know i've known shannon. very nice of you though. yeah i know shannon yeah. for like 30 something years yeah. you know and then of course bethany you know we're mm-hmm. all you know it's very uh much doing what we could to empower them to stay in business sure. Or, right you know. sure so you said 13 years? Yeah. 13 years. Wow. Uh, where then, are the other locations? Sorry. Sorry uh, the other ones are, well, we just opened in San Marino, mm-hmm. which is near Pasadena. Okay. Um, and that one is real fun for me. It's like half skate shop, half pizzeria. Right. Oh, cool. So there's a skate shop on one side, and then there's the pizzeria, That's pizza sick. by the slice on Red. the other. Yeah. So I have that, which I'm super stoked on. And then- uh, How long has that been open for? It's just been open since the last week of December. Oh, it's new. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's super dope. And then we have uh, stores in Japan Mm -hmm. and Korea. So a new store opening in Japan right here the first week of March. Amazing. And then in Shibuya, so right near uh, Harajuku where the original Pizza Nista Tokyo is. Mm. And then in South Korea we have. uh, How's the one in Japan doing? It's doing really good. Mm -hmm. Um, It was definitely challenging when we opened because... 
you know, there was a lot of planning. I mean, you know, putting a franchise deal together takes time. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say no one can predict the future, right? Mm -hmm. So I had no idea COVID was going to happen. They didn't have any idea any of that was going to happen. So, um, you know, and especially with economics, it's hard. No one can tell what's going to happen tomorrow sure. if we're going to be thriving or recessioning or whatever, you know. So um, I give them a lot of credit, you know, for following through um, with our deal. And, you know, we, you know, they opened during COVID, which was mm -hmm. not great. Wow. They had a lot of, you know, when you're a business in COVID, especially serving food, there's a lot of regulation that comes down that you have to um, – comply with mm -hmm. you know so it's very challenging because it changes <clears throat> constantly oh, mm. right so um i think they did an amazing job and the fact that we're getting into our second store I amazing think says a lot amazing sure. yeah how wow. do you how do you open up a franchise like that do you send someone out there like hey you need to teach everyone how it's made and like how does that work yeah so actually we brought them here oh okay yeah so they would come here and we br we spent time with them in our store here and we did all the training here right. and then we sent them back with you know of course we have you know it's like documents from here to mars Dang. Yeah. <laughs> but you know it's like yeah. recipes and you know processes for everything ingredients different over here than it is over there i mean do you is it challenging getting the certain type of ingredients you need over there to match with the quality and consistency of of pizza nista over here um quality is not really the issue mm. but certainly uh ingredients are okay. different because uh there's just certain things that are challenge you know it's just not cost effective to ship tomatoes from to uh you know california right sure you know um you have to source all that stuff out out yeah, there and you know. you know the japanese are really as you know probably in your experience you know just traveling there but mm -hmm. uh they are very amazing at taking something and replicating it and almost doing it better than the thing that they are replicating well, they, they really take they take pride in it they, oh, they yeah. take uh, yeah. yeah they really want to go above and beyond yeah, yeah their their attention to detail just culturally is really i think second to none oh, you know sure. so they just have done such a great job you know maintaining the integrity of our brand because i think anytime a brand franchises or when you scale that's the hardest thing to you know um control is your the brand image and promise sure yeah you know, because it can get diluted real yeah. easy yeah. definitely you know? definitely do I, I watched that uh the mcdonald's uh document not documentary but the one with um what's his name yeah. um costner oh yeah yeah it was like interesting to see like the uh when you do that franchise how, how people di different people can like replicate something but so different Oh yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like I didn't realize. I thought it was like all going to be the same, but yeah, you have to just trust. Well, them, especially right? internationally, <clears throat> it's hard to. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're here and you were franchising in, in Southern California, yeah, it'd be a different story, right? Yeah. It'd be almost easier to kind of control. But if you're internationally, seems like it'd be a little more difficult. Even though they probably are doing it, like you said, almost better than you know you could do it here yeah. in replicating it, so to speak. Not, yeah. if you're, not if you're McDonald's, they could just taste the same everywhere. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. McDonald's, I mean, we're, we're talking. You know. Obviously, it's McDonald's. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> but I think they've spent some time, you know, I think over the years they've learned that in France or Germany or Japan or England or wherever, mm -hmm. you know, there are local or, you know, um, I guess there are certain type of cuisine or flavors that people prefer, right? Yeah. So there are certain things that I think they tweak. Okay. You know, sure. yeah. You know, when you travel, you know, it's like, I remember being in Germany, you get a beer at McDonald's, you know, you can't, oh, yeah, yeah. You can't do that here. Totally. Drive through. Yeah, yeah. You can't get the fried uh, apple pies here. Yeah. They're only baked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. So I don't know. I think there's, you know, I think they've figured it out, but it's hard to, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around growing that big, sure, where, you sure. know, because I feel like, um, for one, you know, there's a lot of environmental considerations when you think about scaling on that level where you have mm -hmm. thousands of stores, you know. Um, I mean, people got to eat, but I don't know. I like the idea of people eating more local. Local no grown stuff. I think it would be better. Yeah. 
for sure. better for you. No definitely. Less definitely. processed. Do they Processing, eat? Processed food is definitely an issue, oh, I yeah. feel like. Huge issue. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you a question, though? When you first started Pizza Nista, I feel like you've always been kind of, you've had this entre- entrepreneurial, like, mm-hmm. did Skaterade, remember? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. 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 That, <laughs> I remember. That was amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've always had that. And then when you started Pizza Nista, I mean, obviously... I mean, it was a big leap, right, to start a pizza place. Mm-hmm. But and the, obvi- the skaters were behind it yeah. 100%. But then, you know, to see not only – to see it transcend skateboarding, right, and to see the, the general population come to love it, yeah, that must have been, like, incredible. Yeah, it feels good, you know, to have something that – you know, I think as a creative person, you know, I think this probably goes for most skateboarders, you mm-hmm. know. It's like there's a creative um, – sort of uh focus i think i don't know as a skateboarder you know you're constantly creating right because you're taking something that you've seen someone else do um typically you're copying it first and then you try to you know i think over time just naturally if you, as an individual it like becomes your own right sure so um I think, uh, yeah, it's it's really gratifying that, you know, first that the, you know, skateboard community really backed, you mm-hmm. know, uh, Pizza Nista. I think the proximity to, you know, uh, Deer Dick Spot, the Fantasy Factory, and then um, the fact that a lot of skaters live downtown and then uh, the barracks being yeah. right there. Totally. You know, we kind of enjoyed having people come through, you know, and that was really great. And, you know, naturally we're in that social media age, so we got a lot of love. Mm-hmm. You know, through social media from people just uh, sharing that they're at, at our spot. You sure. know? So that helped a lot. And and then all the collaborations we've been able to do over the years you right. know, with different, whether it be skaters or artists, photographers, brands, um, all that stuff helps to help, help to build our brand. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I remember, I mean, everybody, it was like the place for skaters. And you, like you said, the Fantasy Factory was there, Barracks. Yeah. I mean, everybody. There was no doubt that we were going to go to Pizza Nista for lunch or after yeah, the session right. or before oh, yeah. the session meeting there, yeah. or even skating downtown for, for that matter. Yeah. Going to go meet a Pizza Nista, yeah. you right. know? And then, uh, yeah. so it was rad. Congrats. It is that. rad. It's so rad. And, you know, it's been not just skaters that live in LA, but from all over the world. You know, yeah. they've yeah. come and they've, you know, I can't even. It's a destination location I, at this point. Yeah, no, it's really, it really is nice, and uh, I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, well, you've built something special, man. Yeah, you sure. know? And you've really, I don't know, you've grabbed the essence of like skating with pizza and yeah. combined it. <laughs> yeah. You know love, what I mean? We love like, both of those things. Yeah, yeah. and pizza. it works. It, it works. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. It's hard to combine yeah. stuff. So I mean. Like we were just talking about the, the skater aid stuff. It was like an energy drink thing, and yeah. we were try, you know, you try to, to combine that, mm-hmm. and then the the pizza thing just clicked, man. Yeah. You just did it, well, beautiful, I, man. I, I, I love it. Well, I want to ask, like, a, where did Pizza Nista name come from, and like, what made you want to start? Just like, I want to start a pizza place. The name is inspired by the Clash, mm-hmm. Sandinista, okay, album, mm-hmm. okay, and the reason I thought of pizza when I decided to, you know, go on this venture was I was in New York and I got inspired by all the little pizza sp- places I'd see in Williamsburg. I was house sitting for a buddy mm-hmm. in 2009 and I'd skate up and down the road. I'd go to Manhattan, come back, take the L train, get off at Bedford, skate up to Grand and I'd grab pizza along the way. And I thought, man, this would be cool in LA, right where I live, mm. you know? And to back to something you said earlier, you know, I really always wanted to have my own skateboarding company, skateboard brand, I guess, you mm-hmm. know, but I didn't want to do a skate. I didn't want to make skateboards the primary focus of that brand. Sure. Right. So that's what, you know, even with Skaterade and then, uh, you know, with Pizza Nista and other stuff I've done, it's always been about, you know, building a brand that DNA is skateboarding, but we're not going to just do another skateboard company. So You did it, though. No doubt. So that's that's been the idea. So... Um, that's, that's the, I guess that answers yeah. your question. Yeah, that's cool, man. <laughs> well, cause I just know you as a pro skater for, you know, most of my life. And yeah. then it's like, I wasn't, I was mentioned to you earlier, I was in Japan. I was at FTC. I'm like, oh my God, there's a pizza nista right here. Yeah. And it's just so cool when you see your friends doing something, go, like, it's not just a skate shop, it's a restaurant. Yeah. 
It's like, that's pretty cool, dude. Yeah, thank it's, you. Yeah. Well, the other thing I liked about pizza, per se, is like, you know, with certain cuisine, there's rules, right? Like French is very specific. Italian, mm -hmm. um, you know, Thai or whatever. You know, when you get into like certain ethnic foods, like they're very specific about how it's prepared. And, you know, you're kind of judged by how mm -hmm. well you uh, conform to those standards. And with pizza, I was like, pizza is like skateboarding. No, there's no rules. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like it's a blank canvas, and you just bring to it what you want. So true. You yeah. Know? You got you got New York style. You got Chicago. You yeah. got Silly, I mean, like, you, you got, yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of different all kinds types. of stuff. Papa John's, yeah. Domino's. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, but the thing is, like, as far as what you put on it, it's sure. endless, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing I liked about it. And we've done some crazy pizzas. I mean, we. When we did Hasoy's uh, book launch, for example, you know, he's kind of inspired by Hawaii. So he wanted this moco loco. Wow. And it was like, you know, it was like rice and eggs and ground beef and gravy. And you what? Know, I want to try made. this. Hey, this sounds amazing. Know? And then, you know, you got other people, you know, I don't know. We, we've just done so many different things on pizza. Is there some things that you just don't do on pizza? Well, I was going to ask. <laughs> Like, how do you feel about ranch? Yeah, we do ranch. We make our own. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. We're so, not. We're not. Uh, what do you call it? Elitist snobs? or snobs? Yeah. Like okay. you know, there's, there's, I went to. I, I was walking by a place the other day. It's like no ranch, no pineapple, no. You know, they yeah, have yeah, a sign yeah, yeah. inside there. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, well. Well, I mean, that the pineapple you know. and the ranch seem to be the biggest yeah. pizza debate ever, and, yeah. and it goes. You know, it's 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 coastal also. Yeah. It's a, yeah, whatever the West Coast, East Coast, yeah. Chicago, all this stuff. We like, could just say it's good, and then if you don't like it, don't get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, wait, the anything? thing is, with our pineapple, it's fresh. That's <laughs> the other thing. We don't use anything out of a can, mm, so that that's makes a, a huge difference. Right. That's definitely a plus. Is your ranch thicker or thinner? I think it's right in the middle. Mm, okay. Good, yeah. Good, it's good. right in the I middle. Like that. I like that. Yeah. Well, congrats on the pizza nista. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no doubt. Amazing stuff. 13 years going on, 23 years going on, 33. I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. I mean, we're going to be talking about, there's going to be thousands of these things. Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, I really want to put emphasis on what we're doing now because I, you know, I think um, I really love this new shop that we built mm. with the skate shop. And I think that uh, I know it's different for you know, it, I, I really built it for myself, right? It's, it's kind of like, <laughs> okay. I put a lot of thought into like, what do I want in a, in a store? Like mm -hmm. what, what, when I go there, like what, what do I want to be around? You know? Okay. So I was like, I want to be around skateboards and I want to be around, we have Strauss, which is a, a what do you call it? A milk kind yeah, of yeah, creamery yeah. out of uh, Petaluma. It's organic. Comes so we, in a glass bottle? Yeah. So yep. we have Strauss Organic Soft Serve. Mm -hmm. I wanted that. Ooh. And then I wanted our pizza. Uh-huh. And we'll have beer and wine. That's it. And, okay. And, oh, and I have a chess table out front oh. so we can sit and play chess. And, so I, have an, right and I have an extra board. Yeah, exactly. This is it right oh, here. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, so this is just a table you could go and you could you put that out front. You yeah, that so anywhere. that table's okay. out front. Anyone who wants to come play, oh, that is out front. I'll yeah. play a game with you, or you can find another. That's challenge. a couple hour. Basically, that's a couple hour mission. Right well, there. no, we bring out the timer. Okay. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it short, short and sweet. I mean, we could be there. We could all do day. five or ten minute games. Basically, he's are you? taking on all challenges. Like so, anybody. <laughs> I don't. I'm not great. You know, I <laughs> love to play, but you know, look at a beer pong table there. Beer pong? Oh no, that's too little <laughs> frat boy. <for> me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is this is basically like things that I love and that I wanted to like have in my mm. life and be around. And so, you know, the one wall, nothing set in stone in the skate shop side. But right now, there's 60 boards on the wall that you can't really see behind that pillar, and it's all pro wow. models. Sick. So I just want to carry pro models, and we're gonna rotate um through different pros so that everyone can have you know some space on the wall at some time rad yeah. super sick yeah looks like the doors open up so it's a looks like they open up um yeah they just outer yeah it's like like a, a violin like a accordion thing. accordion mm. yeah just yeah. they open up and so the whole thing's open all the seating's outside okay yeah wow I gotta stop by. yeah I, I, first of all i haven't been to pizza in downtown for a little while i gotta make a stop there yeah. 
then I got to go to this place too. And San, San Mateo, San Marino, San Marino, yeah. San Marino. Yeah. Open 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah, that's right now. So those are our kind of lunch hours. And then we're kind of staffing up and training up still. And then we'll add dinner. Rad. Dinner nice. hours. Okay. Are you, so do you work out of that place right now? Yeah, I've been up here staying in L.A. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty much there every day. Cool. Rad. I love it. Yeah, I've been setting up boards. <clears throat> yeah? Serving oh. ice cream. <laughs> Uh, Wait, what, what kind of ice mixing, cream? This mixing is a... dough, balling out dough, doing everything. <laughs> what kind of ice cream are we talking about? So we do right now two flavors. I mean, they're, you're kind of limited with soft serve. Oh. I mean, you could do things to add flavors to the vanilla side. Okay. But we have um, organic vanilla, and then we got the organic Dutch chocolate. Or in the middle, you get them both. A swirl. A little swirl. Wow. Sounds, Sounds good. good. I, Sounds I go for the vanilla. Yeah, the vanilla is good. Yeah. Strawberry is coming soon, maybe? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Blueberry. Well, we'll Ooh, see when the good. seasons come around. You know what I mean? Seasons. Oh, yeah, because yeah. it's all natural. Yeah. yeah. All natural. Have you guys ever made, other than Salmon, have you guys ever made a pizza before? We did a thing for girl. I didn't make the pizza, but you had me back there. It oh, was yeah. the uh, the Legends <laughs> thing for girl. Uh -huh. And I was back there with Salmon oh, doing okay. the dough and stuff like that. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. It was fun. That's super sick. I want to go make right one. Yeah. yeah. Well, we should have you guys come in and we'll do a, a nine club guest chef day. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. Oh, oh that'd actually, be amazing. Make a whole day? It for people? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You you could try we okay. could get, if, we, if we could get you there. <laughs> Listen, by the by the day, by the end of the day, you're gonna be closed, man. Yeah, if, man. if we're back there cooking, you're like fourteen beats is well, on the way. Not, it's not in the back. You'll be right out front where everyone can see you. <laughs> oh, so the pressure's on, yeah. bro. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, that'd be a little interesting. Okay, that would be fun. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do it though. We'll I'm do it. That would be great. Down. Come in, make. We like to do that. You know, we're. Uh, I think we're doing some coming up. I can't remember who right off the top of my head, but. Um, we may have someone that's performing at Just Like Heaven, which is a festival in L.A., music okay. festival. We uh, are reaching out to different artists right now with the promoter right. to do something to promote the festival and, you know, do something fun in our shop. Amazing. Mm, cool. See, I love stuff like that. Hopefully Karen O from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's oh. will come in and oh. we'll there you go. pizza with us. Awesome, man. I hope, hope it happens. That would be really Well, nice. you got us. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you the, I would say one of my favorite guest chefs that we ever had was Alyssa Steamer. Right. So, because we've done all these collabs, right? So, we did the Nar Hunters one, and she actually used to work in a pizzeria. So, she came in and actually worked on the line and made pies that night. <laughs> wow. wow. Seriously. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, she killed it. Wow. That's sick. Yeah, we got we to gotta come by and do it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be super fun. That'll um, be a first for me. I've never flip no pizza oh, you can, you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> i seen you skate you'll be able to do it the mac and cheese pizza uh -huh. that, one. that one always interests me because it just doesn't seem like it would go together but it does it's so good yeah it's it does really good and yeah we get you know that's one of those things you know i thought i saw it on a pizza in new york and i was like let's make it here yeah you know so we did and uh we only do it on sunday i was gonna say it's only one day a week right yeah, yeah. yeah. okay Huh. Hey, anybody out there, go check Pizza Nista. If you're in Tokyo, go check Tokyo, uh, South Korea. Mm -hmm. And Same. another one in, in, in Japan, too. Yeah, well, the Shibuya. To, it's Coming the soon. Yeah, coming soon. Okay. Yeah, it'll be first week of March it's opening. Oh, so we'll, 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 put, we'll be posting stuff on you know Instagram. Socials. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah. Congrats. Thank yeah, you. Definitely 13 congrats. years, nothing to, you know, it's a, it's a good amount of time. What's your Love goal? That. Are you going to try to have as many as possible? Or like, is there like a... I don't know. It's an interesting question. My goal is to surf and skate, you know, <laughs> yeah. ride dirt bikes, <laughs> hang out with my kids, <laughs> and travel, be with my wife, you know? Yeah, I yes. definitely you respect know, that. Those are, sure. those are kind of my goals. But, you know, business goals, uh, I'm just taking it slow. Mm, you know, okay. talking about, you know, I guess uh, people that, you know, we get inspired, you know, by different people throughout our lives and you know i've I, I like to read so i was reading about um harry i think it's harry and esther i can't remember their last names right now because i'm blanking but the founders of in and out for mm. example you know they snyder that's their okay. last name they were friends with ray Kroc, for example you know the guy that took mcdonald's you know worldwide but uh they just had a different mindset you know their mindset was like we're gonna just do them one at a time family owned and, you know, we want to be able to 
have the food be fresh and we don't want to freeze it and we don't you know so they i just really like that pace and that great model model. so that's kind of the way i'm i'm growing this thing you know 13 years you know that's the thing so i think 10 years into their uh business mcdonald's and in and out i think in and out had 10 stores Mm. and mcdonald's had a thousand wow you know, and I just like the in and out. Yeah. Model, yeah you know, yeah, and I feel good. like, you know, drive by any in and out and it's packed. You know, they're it's packed. They, for sure. You know, I think they have a good uh, philosophy. They've around. controlled their growth amazingly. Yeah. And yeah. simple, too. It's not like complicated exactly. when you go there. Yeah. It's just very simple. For yeah. sure. So, yeah. I mean, goal wise, I'm trying to like, I think they're my mentor love that like not that i know them but you know that's kind of who i look to love amazing that. i think yeah. their daughter is running their their business now if it's I'm the not granddaughter mistaken. yeah Lindsay. Yes. yeah yes. oh wow yeah. so she was the heir to that yep the, uh, oh, unfortunately yeah. like i think her dad and like some of the other executives passed in oh, a plane okay. and they were actually not supposed to be flying together oh that was really? like a rule the company to separate from yeah yeah in case you know, that happened different flights yeah and wow. like, they actually were in a uh, an accident oh and, man so Holy cow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I've heard that philosophy before. Even with families, like they you know, if they have like a big, you know, estate or whatever, like they'll fly separately. Like Separate. they'll have like the you know, the mother and daughter flying a different flight wow. and then the father and son flying a different flight, like depending on how their families were. Sure, but yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Huh. Wow. <laughs> but, I lo- but I but I love this because it's all has stemmed from skating. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you grew up where where'd you grow up? I grew up kind of all over, but my skateboarding growing up was yeah. San Jose. San Jose. So right. I started skating younger. I was in Washington D.C. Mm, okay. And uh, that's where I kind of first fell in love with skateboarding. And then I lost my board in a sewer, like in a in the rain. Um, it just it it was gone. You know, it got washed <laughs> <away>. <laughs> I was like. Ah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, anyhow, uh, I didn't have a board for a lot of years until, well, not not a lot. I mean, a few years until I was, um, I guess, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade. I was in the 80s. Okay. You know, like early, mid 80s. I mm. got a, a skateboard at a roller skate rink. Mm. It was wide, you know, it was a vision, 10 inches wide, had indies and, Sick. I don't know, uh, City Street Wheels, they were oh, called. Okay. City Sick Street. setup, though. Good setup. Yeah, it was pretty good. It had, you know, and at the time, you got everything on it. So it had the nose thing and the rails and nose the tail card. skitter. <laughs> it was kitted out. It had, I mean, it was like, you know, 90 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff to protect your yeah. board. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Good luck trying sure. to do anything, try to get that thing off the ground. But, uh, yeah, so that was where I kind of got – there was a kid, Jeff Wendell. He had a mullet, and he had a hat uh, <laughs> with the flaps in the back. Did you ever see those? It was oh. like a painter's cap it's with like the, the flaps. The, to protect the <laughs> neck was, from the sun. And, and he was so cool. And there was this other kid, Steve Rafalovich. They were, we were in uh, fourth or fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyhow, I, they were cool, and they skated, and they had the vans and all that. You know, and, like, everything was bright colors back then. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So um, – you know, I wanted to hang out with those guys, and I learned to tic tac and ride off the curb, mm. and jump ramps, and all that. You know, yep. sick. Yeah. So typical that was that 80s, was eighty skating. That was all in San Jose. That yeah. was all. And then we had some ditches that we would skate. You know, you know, that was the best half pipe that we could find at the time. Even though, I want to say there was a scene in you know, I I just kind of serendipitously landed in San Jose, and you know, Caballero was there. Mm-hmm. A lot of the guys that rode for Santa Cruz lived in san jose and uh so yeah slow ray barbie was there okay um so i just kind of started figuring things out Mm. did you eventually you eventually got like a better board um down the line right? yeah so my next board was a jeff grosso schmidt sticks Mm. and uh i love that board but this dude (laughs) that i don't even know Uh this massive dude he was like (laughs) They called it, his nickname was Bear, and he looked like a bear. And he must have been like, you know, I was 14 and he was 16, but he was like, he looked like he was 50. (laughs) He was massive. And he's like, oh, let me try your board, you know? And I'm like, okay. And he tried it and then went up the curb and snapped it. No. I was so bummed. There was nothing I could do either. I was like, "Uh, hey, you just snapped my board. Damn. I was a pretty big kid, but he was very intimidating, you know? So you went home. I just had a broken board. Broken board. Yeah. Huh. 
He was like, sorry, dude. Yeah. I, you know. <laughs> well, see you later. <laughs> my, 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 yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Going on. Uh. So what did you do? Um, did you just I go to get another board? I don't remember. I used to dig in the trash can at Ghostgate, you know, really? to find old boards. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. Mm. And uh, my dad did start to kind of get on his feet. And then uh, I ended up doing work for him he had a, a french bakery and cafe and restaurant so i grew up kind of oh, in wow. a restaurant family oh, okay. and uh so i used to work for him and then occasionally i could get something you know so that's how mm. i started oh getting, that was kind of your pay yes mm, yeah got you so I, uh, yeah i started getting paid but that you know it's interesting i had a lot of kind of adversity in my family over skateboarding because my parents so my dad's from iran mm -hmm. and uh you know, culturally, there was a disconnect and a miss, you know, kind of like a lack of understanding, you know, mm -hmm. um, of just what's possible, I guess, you know, or, or just things that kids could be interested in, you know. So typically, uh, there's a lot of pressure. I didn't have this pressure to be like a doctor or a lawyer. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of that in sure. the Iranian community, you mm -hmm. know, growing up. But I did have the pressure of not skating. Skate. Yeah. Said no. They didn't want you to skate. What did they? What did he want you to do besides that? Like another, like a, a typical sport? Well, I think my dad wanted me to play like tennis Got or it. something okay. like that was respectable mm. in society. Yes. Yeah. You know, Sport wise, you know, skateboarding is different now. You know, at the <sighs> time that I got into skating, you know, you were just. You know, I was that kid smoking behind the bleachers. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what my dad didn't want is me to be that kid like burnouts, you know, or it, it was kind of like the way surfers were perceived in the 60s. Right. Like if you surfed, you were just like a beach bum. Right. You know? Oh, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, there yeah. was you had no future. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. So I think the intention was good. But, um, you know, I I was already my mind was set. You know, my mindset was like, I'm a skater and I'm going to skate. And no matter what, I'm skating. At you this know. point in your Shut life, up. did you yeah. have any inkling of going pro or did, was that even around or a thought in your mind um, that that's possible? I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. knew that you could, I knew that there were people that were good at it and I knew what that looked like. And it looked fun, mm -hmm. and that's all I knew. Right. And I wanted to have that kind of fun. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Huh. That's that's what I was after. Later on, of course, I, I realized, like, reading magazines and watching videos that there are guys that are, these are these guys that have, they have their names are on the bottom of the boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started seeing them in the magazines, and I was like, oh, okay, now, yeah, I definitely want to do that. How, how much how later did that come that that realization um i would say it was probably i would say a couple years mm -hmm. you know into skating when i realized that when what, what time frame is this at, at first it was just like i just want to be cool right, right. right. i just want, like this is so cool what like, smoking these, cigs these, under the bleachers isn't yeah. cool enough i was like these guys are cool this looks cool and it feels rad, and I like that. And that was it. It was that. It was that pure. Well, know? there's a, a lot of kids in your school that skated. Um. Well, yeah. It, there was kind of like a moment in the '80s where skateboarding was extremely popular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I feel like every kid skated. You know, um, if you look at that era, right, the Santa Cruz era mm -hmm. uh, and Bones Brigade era. Um, those guys really, without any social media or anything, reached millions of people. Isn't that crazy? All over the world. Insane, you know, yeah. they toured, you know, the Bones Brigade videos and the videos of that time. Oh. And, you know, think about how many millions of people they reached. That's you know? insane. Think about it. Totally different, yeah. Right? Because in the era that I turned pro, I think about 10,000 people skated in the whole world. You turned <laughs> pro, what, 90? 90? 91. 91, yeah. Wow. You know, no one skated. Yeah. Right. You know, if you skated in the time that I turned pro, you did it because you loved it. And mm. that's it. There was no other reason. There was no, certainly no financial incentive to skate. Yeah, know? it was a smaller, smaller group. You turned pro for real? Yeah. 
what happened? Because you got on Powell early on too, right? Yeah, I was on the like amateur Bones Brigade. What? How did you get on that, and why did you go to uh, Real? Um, how did I get on that? So I got on that because I started meeting other skaters mm-hmm. around town, and I started getting a little better at skating, and I started figuring out that there's places to skate that are where you can get better, right? So um, Corey O'Brien and Jeff Kendall, they basically had like the first barracks. Mm. It was called the Kennedy Warehouse, and it was a private indoor skate park in San Jose, downtown. All the pros from all over the world would come skate there. And uh, I just happened to live not far from there, so I used to go down there and tim Payne came out from florida mm-hmm. to build it and I, I was there like with the drill and a hammer and I oh was you were like, helping you were helping to build mm-hmm. it i helped build it yeah what yeah. was this private park though what was it what was it affiliated with it was basically i think an, initially it was for Corey and kendall to have their a own. place to skate mm-hmm. and it was I think originally intended for like the Santa Cruz. I was going to say, yeah, hmm. but I mean that's ahead of its time, way ahead of its time. Besides, ha- actually having like Powell have what they had. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's it was true. before the that. Skate yeah, zone. yeah. Right. So that's even more amazing. Yeah, because the skate zone was more open to the public. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, this right. was private, and it eventually it opened to the public. Mm. But I think it was 120 bucks a month to have a. Like, that's a lot. Yeah. So. Santa Cruz and some of these other, uh, I guess, sponsors would pay, I think, for their riders to be able to skate there. Okay, interesting. And then I remember paying myself, right, to skate there. And uh, you helped build. You know what's funny is I wasn't allowed to skate there at first. You know, Corey kind of vibed me out of there. Really? He's like, you can't skate here. I was like a little kook. Okay. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) You helped build it though. I know. You had your hammer out. The thing is, it's like, (laughs) you know. it's so funny like when you uh i don't know how to explain it really but like when you have like a certain vibe about you like i was pretty ambitious kid Mm -hmm. you know and i and i knew what i wanted to do and i think you know i didn't understand that that could be perceived as being something negative you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying because typically like in any other thing that you do when you show effort you know it's respected you know it's kind of like when you play team sports if you make an effort to be a leader then there's respect right because the coach is looking for someone to lead the team and inspire like the rest of the they want the captain of the team or whatever and i'm not saying i was a captain but you know i just knew that i didn't want to sit behind a desk and i knew that i didn't want to work nine to five and i knew that i didn't want to do all these other things and i was like the only thing that i want to do is skate and the only way i'm going to be able to do that is to be really good at it and here's this training facility so i I wanted to insert myself anywhere that i could where i felt like i could learn something and get better Mm -hmm. and you know a lot of my friends actually at the time like ridiculed me you know for having that it was the thing Mm -hmm. is it was unconscious sure sure i didn't didn't, there was no way i could articulate this at the time it was more just like an uh uh, the way i was Mm. you know it was the way i um showed up out of a spot hyper kind of hyper get out the car and go rip yeah yeah pretty much or yeah i was just trying to learn as much as i could Mm. were you talking to everyone a lot or just skating I I, i i was actually uh i was actually more um like outgoing at that time mm. and i would definitely like ma- try make connections mm, you know yeah. so i wasn't like you know in my own i wasn't like the kids at the park with the headphones that you just <laughs> yeah, in there, yeah. you know uh, what nothing like that you yeah, know? yeah i yeah. definitely was like connecting with other other skaters yeah you know? i just think that like the older go- you got to remember like vert skating was basically on its way out yeah mm-hmm. and i think that there had to be some vulnerability that they didn't even know how to articulate, yeah. you know? And here are these kids coming up and skating, and we skate in the streets. We skate everywhere, you know? And uh, I don't know. I think... Uh, they were threatened, maybe. May- by the- maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's a possibility. But, you know, I was like kind of like this chubby, you know, awkward 
you know, I didn't, I, I looked different, you know, physically too, you know, than a lot of like typical American kids, you know, oh, okay. and there's a lot of prejudice, you know, at the mm. time. So I don't know. It could have been all kinds of things. Could be. Huh? You know? sure. Wow. But despite all that, it didn't matter because I love to skate. Right. And I always skated as, you know, um, I, I always just put my, put the effort into skate and it wasn't even an effort. It was like, when you do something you love, you're not, you know, it's like, you're not, you're not natural. thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just playing. I yeah. was sure. just playing. I sure. like to play, you know, <laughs> but at the same time though, now you're kind of seeing what's possible though. You're, yeah. Here's that, this park. Here's these people, these oh, pros, yeah. like I, this could be my way to the top. So, yeah. so to speak, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely became conscious yes. of that, you know, because I started, you know, uh, well, or even earlier on, like cab would come, we had a mini ramp at my friend Tom and Mike Miller's house, you know, you know, in the middle of the night, my friend Sam Moore and I would get up, I would tell my dad, Hey, I'm going to go uh, run Sam's paper out with them. You know, he had like <laughs> 150 papers on his route or whatever. And, dude, they were building houses all over. So we were at these construction sites just heisting as much wood as we could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so, you know, 6 in the morning, we show up at my at Tom and Mike's house, and his mom's coming out, and she's looking at us. And we got these 18-foot-long <laughs> two-by-fours on the back of this cart, you know, like <laughs> a stack of 30 of them, um, you know. Wow. We're ready so, to build. Right. So anyhow, like these, you know uh, – so we started having cab and these guys would come skate our ramp, you know? So I was exposed to uh, the elite there skaters you go, early the time, on. Mm -hmm. you know? And is that kind of how you got on the Powell program? Yep. That's exactly how I got on. Mm. Yeah. I started skate. Well, cab wanted to street skate. Yes. That's what happened. Like he street cab, he, and you know, with the whole vert thing, like he, he definitely made a choice to skate street. And he, he did a damn good job of it. Oh, too, no, actually. he ripped. Yeah, yeah he ripped. It. Yeah, he, he, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if, I don't know, I mean, I, don't, I really don't know of another vert skater that was like purely grew up skating pools and vert that transitioned in the street like Cab did. That's why I mean, I'm saying he did so well yeah, doing that. Oh, very yeah. rare. Like, he killed it. I was stoked to see him do that and be part of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, he did it all. Yeah. You know? He had that will to do that you know for sure other guys they couldn't do it so was he like a big yeah. was he a big factor of you getting on the team or getting were you flow or am you said amateur so oh. i i initially got sponsored by uh do you guys remember simon woodstock oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah so simon had a skate shop called winchester skate shop mm -hmm. in campbell and uh he was my first kind of sponsor where he flowed me decks mm -hmm. So I got boards from him, and then Greg Carroll uh, took over team managing Venture. Okay. So then I got on Venture, mm. and then at the warehouse that I was telling you about that ended up becoming San Jose Skate Park, uh, Joe Lopes, who passed, mm. who was a vert skater, he actually was the first guy to flow me boards. I walked into the warehouse one day, and he looked at me and he's like, hey, do you get boards? And I was like, no. And he's like, you do now. And he handed me five boards. Oh, wow. What the kind best. of boards? Uh, I think he rode for Schmidt at the time. Oh, yeah, wow. Lips, yeah. Or Circle A. So I he, can't remember if he rode for Circle A or Schmidt, but he gave me, he, he started flowing me boards. He flowed you out of his personal stash. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm so sick. Wow. So all those little things when you're a kid, you know, that's just like wind in the sails. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For it's just like, know, are they sure. just, are they just seeing you in like out at the parks or are they seeing footage of you? Oh, there's no footage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was, yeah. you know, footage at the time was like a VCR with a thing on the front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 news, right news, yeah, news yeah. Uh, and those, on the and shoulder those are, and those are very rare too, bro. Yeah. Not everybody yeah. had those. Yeah, so there was actually a lady, uh, my my teacher in high school, this really great teacher. Uh, her name's uh, Mrs. Brasher, which I loved because I was like, oh, it rhymes with Thrasher. Like, this yeah. is, you know, everything was like a sign, right? <laughs> so um, she actually would let us take these VCRs with handles on out on the weekends and make videos. So we would Amazing. make little no skate way. videos. They're probably, I don't know, maybe Jason Adams or Sean Mendoli or one of those guys wow. might have one wow, you know, that we made. Mendoli, oh. hell yeah. You know, but we would make those, uh, those, those movies on the weekends. 
With Sean Mandoli in them? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, so, so Sean and Jason and I grew up kind of, we, we were like a, a trio. Like the three of us skated every day. This is before getting sponsored? or like Before. Ed- wow. Yeah, before. And Edward DeVera oh, and like wow. Tim Brosh. And, wow. uh, you know, we had a, 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 a lot of guys that ended up getting sponsored and turning pro. Yeah. We were all kids, but we all, Spencer Fujimoto. Yeah. We all skated together. You know, wow. and, it's a big group right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, San Jose's always been this area that is it just produces amazing skaters. Yeah, no it's insane. Well, yeah, it's a, I mean it's suburban, right? So there's like tons of I don't know shopping malls. You can't skate at them anymore, mm-hmm. right? Shopping centers. So my dad, where my dad's, uh, sorry, my dad's uh, place. It was called Our Daily Bread. Um, there were curbs, uh-huh. and that's that was our skate spot. We all skated there. You know? Slappy, yeah. Just skating like the curves. red curves, yeah. yeah. Wow. Speaking of connections, I don't know if you remember this, but man, you were basically you're the guy that hooked me up first. Oh, I remember. Yes. <laughs> no way. So what? yeah, Solomon and Birdo came up to me mm-hmm. at um, I remember at Pal Powell. Quartermaster. Yeah. yeah. And bro, I was like so like psyched, just like obviously by you it, just coming up to me in general. I was just like in awe. Like, you know, and yeah, he's like, hey, dude, do you get boards from anybody? Like, uh, you, know, you know, we'd be happy to give you some boards. And I was like, okay, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think I got your number and then I obviously gave you a call. And then you, I think you connect me with Jeff Clint. Yeah. And I mean, dude, I would just remember like it was yesterday, bro. This is for like, real. This is for yeah. real skateboards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then you were in it. I mean, I think you had an ad or two. I did. I had did? one ad and yeah. then I ended up quitting. Yeah. This was in but 1990? This is probably 90, 90. I have to say either end of 90, 91, give okay. or take. It's okay. right around when the blind video came out. Yes. 91. Yeah. Yes. Video days. Yeah. 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 And, um, dude, I, that just got me so pumped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you're, you're a part of that, you know, passing in the wind type of deal where you're just like, you really like, I was like on cloud nine, you know what I mean? So that definitely helped kind of catapult me to obviously where I'm at today. It was a big part of it, man. It's Very really, cool. Yeah. <laughs> were you were you looking for talent, or did you just see something in him? I had, you know, in my own experience getting sponsored, mm-hmm. I was like, you know, there's got to be a better way to, you know, a more positive way, I should say, okay. to like encourage people in this direction or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I. Just saw Jerron skate. Jerron was amazing skater always. But when I saw him at the skate zone, you know, I just, I, it was like I was seeing the future. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because he was little and young. Mm-hmm. Um, not much younger than me. Probably I'm 50, you know? So I'm 46. Yeah. So, you know, mm-hmm. he's four years younger. At that time, like four years, you know, that that's a big time Definitely. difference might as well been like a 15 year gap exactly year gap, yeah. right yeah. so yeah, when i saw Jerron, sure. he was like he reminded me of a guy you okay. know i was like here's this little he's small and he rips you know and yeah. he had like a really uh he he skated with power and he had a lot of technical ability uh, at the time yeah. and huh. i saw that and i was like i kind of felt responsible at the time for being like shaping what real because i you know i rose to a, a stature at real where i was basically like the top dog sure right? yeah. so i felt that i wanted to help mold that team you know and i just saw jerron as being such a great mm. part of that you know and i wanted to be around skaters that inspired me because i wanted to continue to learn you know and there were guys that i would see and i was like oh I like the way he skates. I want to skate like that, or I want to mm. learn what he, and Jerron was one of those guys. Right. Who were some of the other guys that you helped put on the team? Well, I got Sean on. Okay. Yeah. I got, uh, Edward on. Mm. Um, I got Julian stranger on. Wow. Gons on yeah. real. What? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I was like, I wanted to surround myself wow. with, you know, people that i wanted to be around and skate with and that inspired me that's i mean two of those guys have companies out of that out yeah. of the distribution now yeah you know you got julian and you got mark <coughs> yeah that's incredible dude definitely so yeah. i mean i was always a big fan of sean mandoli too oh sean mandoli I is well. amazing yeah I, I never saw much later on like he was when i started skating he was skating a little bit and then 
I never saw him kept like you know what I mean. I, I, yeah. I would go back and watch the videos. I'm like, dude, this guy was good. Oh yeah, great style. Yeah, great style, amazing tricks. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So leading up to real, because you were on you were on Powell for just um, probably a year. You, we were you were in band this mm -hmm. propaganda propaganda. What made you leave Powell to go to real? Was there more opportunity there? Or I want to I want to just go back for a second. <clears throat> Please, I want to articulate something that I didn't know back then mm -hmm. you know i so i was skating with cab a lot javante used to come so javante and i were very close and uh we used to take caltrain up from san jose we, when, when we didn't drive we would go up to the city mm -hmm. get, get off in downtown and then we'd meet up with whoever right sick um so we met you know of course everyone at embarcadero um and I met Henry and Mike and, you know, I rode for venture. So we started connecting Danny Sargent, you mm -hmm. know, was like kind of like, I think like one of the more well-known street skaters in San Francisco at the time. So we'd hook up with Danny and um, we would skate all over the city. You know, we'd skate all the hills. We would skate, you know, down the hills. We'd skate Civic Center. We'd skate Brown Marble Benches. We'd skate Black Rock. Black Rock. We, mm -hmm. Then we had, you know, it's kind of like. It was almost like a route to get to mm -hmm. EMB. Oh, <laughs> and then yeah. we'd end up there, right? Um, so, and I was skating with Cab a bunch at this time, too. And so Javante would come down to skate in San Jose. And then, like, all the East Bay guys, like Brian Ferdinand. And then I met Tobin and Luke Ogden and all these guys. So, all you know, it, just, it all just started to mix, mm. right? So, like, we'd be going to the city... <sighs> We'd be going to the East Bay, and then all those people would come skate with us in San Jose. And then Simon actually was putting on skate jams all every weekend. So there would be a place to go um, skate. Uh, and I, I think Jason Adams, I saw his episode. He probably told you about the one called the Don't Tell Solomon yeah, Jam. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a jam that I was like the title of it was don't tell me to come to <laughs> but it you, but, but you found out about I it i ended up you, there you ended up there yeah it's not wait wait funny. wait let's go back and because he <laughs> what why <laughs> why why yeah why they, did they, he dude. why was there a don't tell solomon jam refresh our memories honestly like i think you was, know going back to like my attitude at mm, the time ambitious um, yeah like i really was you know probably trying too hard you okay. know what i'm saying so you would you'd kill these things. I would, I would, I would, I would say like from other people's perspective. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I can go back to some experiences that I had. Like I remember um, we went up to San Francisco one time. And around this time, uh, I was with my buddy Troy Cooper, who I loved to skate with. He was like this little like B-boy hip hop like you know a little white kid you know he just had the sickest freshest style you know and uh so we're driving up to san francisco san francisco there was a skate camp that they had set up in the projects right so we're driving we're, we're with webster and eddie you know gnarly projects in san francisco mm. and we're driving up and i don't even want to repeat what this guy these kids said that were standing on the corner i was like yo you know, we have the window down. I'm like, where's the skate camp? And they're like, skate camp? They're like, ain't no skate camp. This is where you get crack, you know, and all oh, this wow. stuff. You know, with all this other stuff they had said to us also, you know. But anyhow, <laughs> we ended up find it, finding, you know, the camp. And um, I remember Nottis was there. Uh, Julian was there. Mickey was there. Hmm. Um, Thebo, Tommy, wow. everyone, you know. And I had already known. I had met these guys. Um I had seen Nottis before at some contest down in Modesto. But, yeah, so I come in, and I'm skating. We're skating this mini ramp. And I remember, you know, in San Jose, when you skated somewhere, like a ramp, you know, we skated ramps at the time, mini ramps, you know, and whatever ramps were around, vert ramps, mini ramps. You know, the sessions were always snake sessions. Like, you had to, in order to get a run, like, you had to have the balls to get into the bowl, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You you weren't you didn't get a run unless you forced your way into the ramp. Right. And so I had that attitude. Like that's what I grew up with. So I remember going to the city and I'm skating 
and I'm snaking all these guys. You brought right? that. You brought that attitude into the streets. Exactly, and I brought it to like sessions like that. And here I am skating with Nautis and Mickey. And, like, <laughs> You're just and, snaking and, and, everybody. And, and, and I'm, I'm not kidding. I, I'm surprised I didn't get my ass beat that day. You wow. know what I mean? Because I was actually like, you know, it, it almost came to that. Did someone say something to you? Oh yeah, it almost came to that. But I remember. Um, I did learn a rad trick that day because oh. I, <laughs> I was doing backside disasters at, at the time. Like it was, you, you know, you always did a disaster and you go to Smith, yes, or whatever. But I could just rewind it all the way. I would, mm. I would just go. I would skip the disaster and just land in the Smith, and then okay, you know, like yeah, kind of yeah. Chris Miller does that trick, you know. Mm. But I had that shit on lock that day, you know? <laughs> yeah. and like I'm doing it every single run, and I'm like. You know, it was just obnoxious. Basically. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? How old are you at this point? Oh, I must have been 16. <laughs> 16? Okay. You know? Right. Point I'm trying to make is uh, go ahead. I was going to say because, like, the um, don't tell Solomon. That's jam. why they didn't want me there. Right. Uh, <laughs> because of that attitude. Okay. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> You know? But you ended up there anyway. You ended up there anyway. Yeah, I did. Yeah. How did you feel when you went there? Hurting? I didn't care, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like I wanted to skate, you know, and I wanted to be around that, that scene. And, you know, oh, it was the scene was like that, you know, like uh, it was harsh. It was aggressive. It was, it was very harsh. Wait, was there actually flyers? Oh, yeah. They were all over. You know? <laughs> I, found, I, mean, I found, that's how I found out about it because I saw the flyer. They're posting flyers. Uh -huh. Don't tell Solomon. Mm hmm. With that printed on it, and they're everywhere for you to find. Yeah. Did you think it was funny, or were you kind of pissed off? No, I was upset for oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, was, you, I was hurt by it, of yeah. course. You know, because like I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be part of this group. Sure. Um, so yeah, it was upsetting, but it didn't deter me. Mm -hmm. Did you did it, did it change the way that you acted or, or skated around people after that? Like, were you snaking people still at that point? Well, or? you know, I didn't look at it. It wasn't personal. Yeah. Right? It wasn't like I wasn't trying to snake you. Well, you were trying just, to get in. I was just yeah. trying to skate. Right. Yeah. And that was how it was where mm -hmm. I grew up, mm -hmm. you know. So I think bringing that, I guess, to, you know, certain environments was not probably uh appreciated mm. yeah <laughs> that, well that's that funny group yeah. of individuals yeah. for sure because that's yeah. then that's crazy because then you end up getting on real so at one point they must have been like oh this guy's actually pretty cool you know whether you make a negative impression or a positive one i think making an impression is the thing right yeah, yeah. so um yeah i ended up actually becoming friends with tommy and jim and I would skate with them a lot in the city uh, when the whole pal thing kind of was crumbling mm. at that time. And uh, I don't, Jeff Clint didn't like me at the time. Not, he didn't like me. He, he told them, he was like, I don't think he has what it takes, oh, you okay. know, to, yeah. to be on the team, <clears throat> you know? So anyhow, I was skating with them. And then eventually I did get on real, like right, right at the beginning when it started. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first board, I got was a Tommy Guerrero hand me down. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it was uh, skated. Tommy skated it and gave it to me. Wow. Yeah. I wish I had that board. It was a great board. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I wanted to go back to the Powell thing because yeah. I was skating with Stevie and, and Javante would come down. So Stacy came up to film Cab for uh, Public Domain. Mm, okay. And he was going to film him at Buena Vista Pool up near Santa Cruz. And. Um, it was in that video and i you know you see us in the background of cab's part a lot uh cab uh, uh javante myself and troy cooper oh, the okay. three of us so um you know we're in the we're in the background of his part when he's skating the spine ramp at that skate park i was mm -hmm. telling you about the uh kennedy warehouse yep. and then i don't think we're in the background of the pool shots because they were shot with film real tight but um anyhow i remember uh we were skating at cabs in front of his house. Just Javante and I were dorking around skating in the streets. And Stacy came out to us and said, you know, do you guys, do you guys want to be on the bones brigade <laughs> to both of us? And we we're, yeah, immediately we're like, yeah. And like a couple of days later we had, you know, boxes as big as this table full of wow. skateboards. Wow. Wow. I mean, that must've been huge. Yeah. And I sure. want to go back. So the thing I wanted to say is that, when I was a kid, and I wouldn't have been able to articulate this, but I 
later on, I, I and I've even told Stacy this. I said if I knew that if he knew that I existed on planet Earth, I had a shot at being a pro skater. Right. That's it. That was it. That's all I needed wow. is for Stacy to know that I'm on Earth. Just a little, a hint of recognition. Yeah, exactly. And once that happened, it was, it was on. It was on. Yeah. 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 But soon it was on real. Well, no, yeah, you know, it, it was on. And you know what's funny is like I got on, and then we, you know, here we are thinking we're, you know, or whatever. I'm. I didn't think anything. I was just stoked, right? But you know, you kind of feel like okay, I'm getting somewhere. Like I'm getting mm -hmm. better. You know, I got this recognition. I'm sponsored. So we come down to L.A., right? And we're skating with Lance, and he's filming us. And then we get introduced to Guy and Gabriel and Rudy and Paulo. And I was just thinking, oh, my God. I, I was like, I have I ever even seen skateboarding before? Because they were <laughs> so good. You know? they. I mean, Guy, the first time I saw a Guy, the first time we ever skated, he was, like, kick-flipping, you know, this massive double set, you know? And he was doing manuals, kick flip out. This was in uh, like 1989, you know, or 90. Yeah. Wow. Was, you know, so when I saw, you know, and Gabriel was by far the most advanced. Gabriel of, Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. Out of all of, out of all of them. He was the best, like technically he was the best skater out of those guys at that time so your mind was blown oh big time i was like oh i got i i went home super inspired for sure oh that's interesting and you didn't go home defeated you went home inspired oh yeah no i was like oh like they just opened up my mind huh. to like the possibilities of yeah. what can be done on a skateboard you know is this when the switch was really is this when the switch the, the light switch went off and you started skating switch around that time yeah, because, mm. you know, boards started to change, right? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. they went, like, think about the boards we rode. I was riding Frankie Hill's board. Huge. Steve, Steve Sai's board. Yeah. Steve Sai's board, like, we used to do nose wheelies on that thing. The nose is this long. Yeah. It's about two, <laughs> two inches. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so board started, Ray's board was kind of the most advanced, mm. you know? And I actually used to, buy, I used to get Ray's board because it was the longest board you could get. And I didn't like the concave and the and the steepness of the tail and the nose, so I used to uh, order only raised board, and then I would uh, take the rear truck holes, I would re-drill them in the wood shop at my high school, up, and then I would cut the tail off. So I'd get a flatter tail, and I would have any kick in the tail. I would have a little bit, little but bit. I just wanted it flatter because mm. I really like, I was super into 360 ollies at the time mm. and I would do them hauling ass down the street on the flat ground. And, uh, I just liked that flat tail to do that. Wow. You know? And, uh, I mean, this is a, board, that's how I board cut, right here. The Ray Barb. I mean, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. So I used to, so you cut that tail. Yeah. I would cut it off and I would cut those ears off of it too. So did you, when you started skating like this and making these boards did you bring it to the wood shop like hey or not the wood or like whoever like we need to make different boards here no i would just do it at my high school but what about like when skateboard starts to be like what is it popsicle shaped when did oh like so when i when i start when i got on real yeah i actually w got involved with that you know mm -hmm. like there was a you know pros at the time were very i think more involved with like their boards at the you know mm -hmm. like the shapes and all that so i did my first shape myself wow you know but uh um yeah part of the reason why tommy actually offered to like hook me up with boards is because i remember i saw him at the warehouse and he saw my board and he's like what is that and i was like oh i made this at my high school you know and it was the ray barbie and he's like dude if you ever need boards because <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to think when the popsicles when the, when the board started changing i mean 92 so my board okay when my board came out so i turned pro i went to europe 91 <clears throat> as an amateur mm -hmm. and I skated in all the pro street contests. And I think a few guys like maybe Rick Howard and some other guys, Mike Carroll, and you know, we all kind of were on that trajectory, right? Okay. Um, Contest circuit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Cause so Lance Conklin was the last pro, the last skater to turn pro winning the NSA finals. After that, no one turned pro like that anymore. Got it you. was you turned pro because you rode for a company you kind of had 
street cred or whatever you want to call it and you had um what do you call it validation from yeah. like the circle of pros that were street pros or mm -hmm, whatever at the mm -hmm. time you know right so when my board came out that year october it was like october later that year mm -hmm. when i got back from europe it was the skinniest board like with the straightest rails and the roundest tail that you could get wow it was you know it wasn't quite a popsicle yet mm. but it was on its way it was well on its way and it was the first <clears throat> board to ever be screened from the nose to the tail mm. because boards all the graphics were always in the middle yeah is this oh, it right here is okay. this it? no but no, that I was one it, of my first boards that's the that was, the, the, that guy, was an ever slick it was the stri stripes stripes that's with the was. camel okay that's oh with the camel yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's iconic yeah so that was the board that was like you know that board looked pretty flat that, right there. There it is. That board was flat. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. That That's a reissue, I think. But, mm. um, I remember getting a box of boards. Dude, it was and, these. What, and what's cool is everyone wrote it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you went to EMB at that time, everyone was riding that board. That's we but it was a it. celebration too. Like it everybody was, was like, and and, I, and I think that was common. Like I wrote, you know, it's like I, when I was in Europe that year. I rode Danny Way's DW board the whole time. Amazing. I never even rode a real board, you know. Mm -hmm. I rode black label. You know, it was a funny time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Right, right. It, it, it's nothing like it is now. Like your agent would kill you if you did something like for that. For sure. Today, I mean, I remember you know, wearing but, a stereo shirt and I've skated for girl and, and it was and it was okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we were just supporting yeah. our yeah. like friends, so to say. Yeah, I mean, I, all year and all, all the whole time in Europe, you know, I was riding uh, Danny's board and I was uh, wearing a uh, Gabriel Rodriguez. I got the, the Jesus, yes. Gabriel Rodriguez mm. graphic, 101. and it had no color. It was just black and white. And the only color was like a red uh, blood, like mm. one blood drop. I don't know. It was like a, huh. if they printed it like that. I don't like, remember them. I don't crazy. remember that shirt yeah. being black and white. No, it had color. Yeah. So I just had a black and white one with a little, like one of the blood drops was oh, red. And I wore it all summer. You still got it? I wish. Wow. <laughs> I wish. Dang. I loved Gabriel, man. Oh, same, bro. Same. Miss such him, a man. such a legend. Mm. So when you're on real now, I mean, you, you like you said, you rose to the top of real pretty quick, right? Yeah. I mean, you then you get Sodi in '93. Well, yeah, because you know there were other guys on real that I loved, like Tony Henry, who mm. a lot of you guys probably don't remember, was one of the most amazing skaters ever, mm. and could ollie over that that uh bar right there right off the yeah, it's a counter ground. it's not a yeah, oh, yeah, that counter. <laughs> yeah. that's I mean, how he, big it is yeah mm. yeah he would have ollied right over that you know he right. was amazing wow. you know from san jose uh you know he passed sadly but he was just another inspiring san jose skater but he so the original real team was tony henry i remember uh this team. Corey chrysler who yeah, also Corey passed chrysler. uh henry mm -hmm. uh sluggo Ooh, yeah, that's sick. my boy right there. Oh. Damn. Oh, he did have snaps. Oh, yeah. Tony was no joke. Dude, look at that. That's wow. in the 80s right there. That was nuts, man. You know what I mean? Wow. Ooh, oh, I mean, look, uh oh Look at the size of that. That's all that stuff Sal skated in the yeah. H Street video. True. Yeah. Silver Creek. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, my God. I remember meeting Sal. <laughs> For the first time. I'm like, who's this guy? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. He is a character, man. Yeah, Tony Ooh, was just he was you know, he was just one of the best back Amazing. then. He was, you know, very ahead of his time and had that power. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was not like when the first real ad came out, I don't think I was on quite yet. And then like short like, you know, within a month I was on the team. Right. Cause really? Because when I got on, it was the the boards hadn't come out yet. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just trying to think of timelines because everything back then was happening so quickly. Yeah. Like every the progression of skating was just like like one month would go by, it'd be on a whole new level. It's yeah. literally overnight, man. <laughs> right. Overnight. But you were like kind of the pioneer Excuse of the me. switch. The whole switch dance well, skating? Kind yeah, of where I, mean, I was going with that. It was yeah. like you saw something that kind of wasn't being done. Yeah. I think Jeff Clint was really part of getting into, I think with myself and Henry especially, mm. he would, uh, I don't want to say he didn't coach us, but he would just say things occasionally when we were out and we'd go skate. You know, like for example, 
um, we were at a trade show in San Diego. And so Jeff and Henry and I, like he always wanted to be out skating with us, which was really cool, right? Uh-huh. Which I thought was odd because <laughs> – we know we were a lot younger and we had a lot more energy and he had the trade show to run and all that, but he was always wanting to be out with us skating. And I thought, you know, we like that mm-hmm. obviously cause he, you know, uh, was running the show. But, uh, I just remember we were skating one night and we were, uh, skating a fire hydrant, like a bump over a fire hydrant. And I remember Jeff said, he said to us, what if you ollied over it and then you shove it in later? Oh, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool, hmm. you know? Wait, and uh, wow. so Henry and I started trying it, you know? And I landed it. So I landed a late shove it over a fire hydrant. Front side or back side? Front side. Front side. Mm. Mm. And you had never seen or heard I'd of it? never anyone... seen it, never heard of it. It wasn't in the blind video yet or none of that, you know? This was before that. Wow. And uh, I remember going home. I, I'm sure Jason Adams and Mandoli will tell you. I remember going I couldn't stop doing it. <laughs> You know, I got home and I was like late shoving everything, you know, and then uh, like, you know, there's kind of like this collective consciousness, I think, in I skating, but like yes. a, a month later, it's like guy, mm-hmm. Sheffy, it's everywhere. Yeah. It was just all over the place. That's why it's you know? hard to pinpoint who did what first is totally. because like you could be here in LA doing mm-hmm. it with somebody in San Jose doing it and even somebody on the East Coast doing it. Like it was this weird. Straight you out. wouldn't see the footage for like I think, a while. I think, you know, I probably didn't do it first. Mm-hmm. I know I landed it that night. No mm-hmm. one no one saw it. It was just me, Henry and Jeff. Sure. Right. And we, you know, and I went home and did a zillion more of them, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, I don't know, you but know, you- pr- probably Jeff knew, you know, there's things that he probably knew that was going on and he wanted us to be part of that and mm-hmm. just kind of planted that you think that he may have heard somebody doing that probably. and wanting to get you guys to do it probably he probably saw something or whatever because you know rocco jeff oh yeah all these guys they were they were battling uh, conniving at the time <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying there's a lot of conniving there's the key on. word right yeah. there uh, you know what i'm saying <laughs> straight up. rocco conniving? and rocco <laughs> you know there's a lot of you know kind of like you know I don't know, conniving. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So I think I think Jeff probably heard or saw or something. Just like one and upping, then, one upping yeah, each other. And then next thing you know, we're we're doing that stuff, you know. But everyone's doing it. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. you know, for all I knew, I did the first late shove it. That's it, yeah, right? Know? I didn't know, but I didn't like. There were no claims, you know. I wasn't mm. like going home claiming that. I just, I just was a new trick that I liked doing. It, we could yeah. it could have been called the front side of God. Could have been. <laughs> but the other thing that's really cool is that. Um, like you said, things were happening really fast and skateboard tricks were progressing. Like we grew up in the era where you almost like you did a trick and it was done. You do a trick. It was, it was like one and done. Yeah. It was just like you did it and it was over. You're on on to the next thing. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Sure. And Mm -hmm. I remember like vividly like experiences like that. I remember I was in Le Grand Bournon, like in the Alps in France and it's like me, Rick, guns danny colin like all, this whole group there is just like a it was like a, a rap or, or a breakdance battle <laughs> you know and we're just all taking turns trying tricks and it was literally in a circle and and we're just everyone's just trying a different trick it's like nollie switch whatever like we're mm-hmm. all trying different stuff i wish that was on film that would have been <laughs> you know sick. and and it's it just all I mean, there was more people there. I can't remember everyone that was part of this little circle, but we're all just, I don't know, trying something new. Do you remember starting to skate switch? Oh. Did, like, do you remember the day where you're, because it wasn't, nobody was doing it. Yeah. It, was, it was literally, you had to, like you. It wasn't even a thought back then, right? Right. Only, only, no people, only yeah. people that were doing it were Gans. Was Gans. Gans was doing that before. Yeah. A like, lot of people, but he wasn't was it he, wasn't really doing hard tricks. He was just doing little things. I mean, he would go off a launch ramp switch. Oh, wow, yeah. so yeah, he was he was doing it. Yeah, yeah. what inspired me was Nautis. Okay, I was in San Francisco, and we were skating brown marble benches around the corner from EMB right there. And I remember I saw Nautis nollie up to he didn't even grind. He just nollied. He was like not going very fast, but he nollied up and landed on his trucks onto the bench and that just blew my mind 
you know i was like oh my god you can do that off the front what year was this what year <laughs> what are we talking i have no idea 89 89 90, okay somewhere okay. around there gotcha. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. probably 89 because um no it must have been 90 whatever it, it was around that time because i was skating backwards before i turned pro was he flip? Mm. Was he flipping his board around to no. do that, or he was doing it off the nose? No, yeah, off the nose. Off I the nose. Wow. I think he did it in Streets of Fire, I believe, in this in the Speed Wheels video. So there was an ad that Jeff wanted. So there's another thing, Clint. Sure, he's yeah. like, let's do this ad where it's all nollie sequences. I want you to give me five sequences nollying. It was called Nasal Passage. The name of the ad. <laughs> okay. So I did a nollie. I can't remember all the trips tricks, but nollie nose. You remember nose bonks were a thing. Oh like yeah. He, ollie nose bonk something so i did nollie nose bonk and then i did no like nollie kick flip on the ground was a trick there's the ad there we go. yeah, what? <laughs> yeah we got it so there's uh nollie back 780 to like switch 50 50 or wow. whatever yeah. the okay. first one nollie kick flip oh nollie like and then yeah. switch manual or whatever and then the nollie nose bonk so good dude. so that Wait a you did a nollie flip on flat ground yeah that was a trick at the time right because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that had never been in anything nah, that was first for sure you know i remember ali mills did one in what was it the who do you ride uh, for birdhouse new, new deal oh new deal mm. yeah mm. so yeah. so anyhow uh go ahead yeah you know this was all jeff's idea and i you know, i want to say that's before i turned pro but uh, mm. the nollie back seven eighty fifty fifty is gnarly. I know. Yeah, there was, that's a rare one. Yeah, you still don't really, back then. Yeah, you still don't really even see people that. do it now. I see it a mm -hmm. lot. I, I see people doing it down rails and flipping into it and all kinds. Well, of I see like nollie back seven eighty nose grind, but fifty fifty. It's yeah. not a common not trick, a common but you one. do see it. Uh, yeah. You yeah. do see it. Yeah. But wow, that's amazing. So, um, anyhow, because I was doing all this, and I, that was like a primary focus of mine at the time i like doing tricks off the nose mm -hmm. and so i i pushed mongo when i first started skating mm. so i got hurt and i couldn't ollie so i just was like i'll just skate backwards so i just started doing that and that became you know because i pushed mongo mm. it just seemed it natural it just seemed mm. normal to yeah. me. it felt normal <laughs> you know and because i had already learned nollie kick flips and heel flips and all that stuff when I was going the other way, it just felt normal, you know? So and it looked normal. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I think it did because of the push. Yeah. That's another thing I thought. I don't think a lot of people had that push. No. It was Switch Mongo. A lot of it. Which when you had the push, it made it look that much more like Chico had the push, mm -hmm. right? Everybody that, everybody that started off Mongo had that push. Yeah. But I know a lot of people didn't start off Mongo, so. I think, you know, at the time too, it's like, I went to Europe. I remember I went to Europe to skate in those contests. Mm -hmm. I was already skating like that. So, you know, I was doing those tricks as an amateur at pro contests. And I don't know, someone had pointed out to me years later, like, look at this article. You know, here's an article saying, like, um, you know, you probably should have won this contest, but the judges at the time didn't even know what was what you were doing. They didn't uh, recognize you were riding was, switch. Exactly. You know, and that was like that must all have, those Europe contests. Dang. That didn't, didn't matter. Yeah. You know, but, but but looking back, I mean, that's an, it's unfortunate that they didn't know. You know, what it was I mean? ahead of their time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did they just think so, you were skating fakey or something, or did they even? They just didn't know, this, you know, yeah. just didn't know. Yeah. They didn't know he was skating switch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just thought it was normal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sodi, 1993. Mm -hmm. I think you were, what, the fourth or fifth Sodi ever? Fourth. Fourth. So, was, yeah, because Tony. Tony was first. Yeah. And then I think Danny or. Danny Way. Cardio, maybe. Mm. How did they, when did Carol get it? Carol got it a after year after. Me. After, okay. Yeah. How did you find out that you got it? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember uh, there it was, you know, do you remember ASR? Oh, yeah. 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 ASR was a trade show in San Diego. Yeah. It became Agenda later, but yeah. Yeah. It so it was ASR, ASR, like yeah. Action Sports Retail Show or whatever. So um, Kevin Ansel, I don't know if he, he would be a great guest to have. He lives in Hawaii, but hmm. he did all the graphics. Uh, for real, he designed the Spitfire logo mm. and lots of other 
iconic logos. Mm. Um, which if he got a nickel for everyone, <laughs> he produced, he'd be a zillionaire. But no doubt. so Kevin, I love Kevin. He's probably one of the most amazing humans I've ever met, and you know, you guys can hopefully get him on That'd here. Be and have yeah, him. yeah, I'd love to but talk to him. He's unreal. Anyhow, so Kevin, Jeff, Clint, and I are are, are going to the trade show. I'm driving. I'm mm -hmm. driving the deluxe. There's like a I think they rented a box truck, right? And we got the whole booth in it and i'm driving and we're going down the 405 i remember we're in you know going through la and it's crazy traffic and you had driven it from san francisco yeah from san francisco down and and kevin is like vibing on me he's like man you're a good driver you know or whatever <laughs> like driving this box van through la traffic you know it's yeah. a big box van so anyhow um i think jeff was sitting on the passenger side <laughs> And Kevin might have been in the middle. And I just remember Jeff looking over at me like this. He looks over at me. He's like, and he always was like, he always had this, like, I don't know if it was real or made up or fabricated, but he had this enthusiasm and excitement all the time hmm. when he talked to you. And he looked at me and he's like, so how does it feel to be Salman Aga? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I'm just <laughs> driving this box driving. truck like, yeah like and, but serious now yeah. he's serious yeah. right but it's all exciting you know and and Ke kevin's looking at me and I, he was like a big brother to me you know and i felt like his little brother and anyhow uh big boisterous dude you know kevin would like at the trade show, he'd drink a fifth of Jack and be passed out snoring, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's classic, just okay. unreal human, but uh, just the heart of gold. Mm -hmm. He uh, So he's looking at me and telling me how much he loves me or whatever, and Jeff's like, so how does it feel? And, I'm, and I go, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. You know? I mean, I feel fine. You know, I'm driving this damn truck. To the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going ASR, baby. Yeah. So um, it's funny because it was like, I guess the first time that I was made aware that like, my name or who i am or or, or that i am something right oh, like i didn't man. ever think like that huh you know what i mean so um interesting and it was on that drive that you know he he revealed to me that like i'm skater of the year because it was mm. towards it was it was at the end of the year okay and we were going to the trade show and so that question he asked you, what is it like to be Solomon Aga, was a precursor yes. to the Sodi okay. announce, like letting me letting know, you know, basically. And uh, so on that drive, you found out. Like I you, found out. So you went to ASR knowing that you were skater of the year. Yeah. How did they present it to you, though, Thrasher? Well, there was a big party yeah, in okay, San Francisco. Okay. There was like I can't remember whose warehouse. It wasn't the Studio Forty Three warehouse. It was a different one, but. There was a ramp and it was like a big skate jam yeah, party. I remember it. Oh, right here, huh? Yeah. And uh there oh, he is wow. with the trophy. Yeah. Did you Wait, speech? how much longer did, uh, uh, ahead of time did you know? I mean, not much longer, not like much week? before that. I guess not. I mean, this is after trade show, right? I mean, obviously you're back up in San Francisco after the trade show. Yeah. Yeah, this is later on. Yeah. What a time. Yeah. You still got that trophy at your house? I do, yeah. Yeah, I have it, you know. sick. I don't know. Can you trade it for a hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> What's it worth? Yeah. Um, That's probably, but you that probably, you'd probably get a good penny for that. Yeah, yeah. you probably could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. is like you were the fourth Sodi ever, 1993. Mm -hmm. Tony Hawk. I mean, you're already in good company. And Thrasher's already, like you were saying before, it's like, this is Thrasher. Yeah. So it must have been a huge, huge deal, even if even if it was so new, or yeah. with only being a couple of years old. It was. It was a huge deal. I think it, where I from where I came mm. to be standing there, it was it was um, for from from coming from the Don't Tell Solomon Jam <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> to like you know it's it's a funny yeah. thing to be accepted. And to be venerated amongst your peers, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to say that, you know, 
um it was very foreign it's it's all been foreign since then mm. you know but i want to say uh you know i grew up you know my family was kicked out of the united states when i was a kid during the iranian revolution mm. wow and you know i grew up in a broken home you know i didn't grow up with my mom mm. i grew up with my dad um i was I moved around a lot. So I never really had a connection, you know, that a lot of kids had in their youth mm. to like um, a group of people or I didn't have any like real, st any stability like in a that base. way. You didn't have a base. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, even getting into skating, like I kind of forced my way into that scene. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't obviously wasn't being accepted, you know, and I didn't know how to go about it in a way like a, a normal social way. So I was trying to show that I belong, right, with my ability. And uh, mm. it finally got me to where somewhere, right? Sure. Um, but that somewhere, I think it was premature, honestly, like when I look back. I oh. mean, certainly I was doing things and I was skating a way that was being recognized as being innovative, mm -hmm. you know? But I had a lot to learn still, you know? So I think... In a lot of ways, you know, I was 21, you know, I was, I'm 50, you know, that was so long ago. Right. You know, so I think at the time in my career, it was almost a disservice you know, really? to me. Yeah. Well, there wasn't like, I mean, Skater of the Year now, the way um, the skateboarding industry is, you know, there's a lot of vying for it. You yeah. know, people are competing, you know, for this uh, end of the year celebration. Thing, right. Yeah. Like yeah. at the time, there was no... Made. There was no competition, you know, it was just, you know, I was just being myself and so was everyone else. Sure. Um, and I just happened to be at the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. doing the right thing with the right group of people. Hmm. I don't know. There's there nothing else came along with it. You know what I'm saying? Except for an expectation, hmm. you know, So you almost felt more pressure and I didn't have the, I guess, you know, I didn't have a, uh, what do you call it? Like, I don't know. I'm into motorcycle racing. Mm -hmm. You know, I watch a lot of the pro motocross nationals and supercross and it's amazing. Like these guys, like there's one guy doing the thing, right? He's racing, but he's got a mechanic, a suspension guy, a trainer, an agent, you know, there's a group of people around this person basically like managing his affairs so that he can be good at that thing. Right. And what ended up happening to me is I ended up being all those people for mm -hmm. myself, yeah. uh, but I wasn't really in a place mentally or, or emotionally or, and I didn't have the experience to really deal with it all. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So it was sure. a little, I think, you know, it was a, like when Mark Johnson got skater of the year, at his age, I was like, that seemed that I'm stoked for him. That's great. Okay. You know, I think he, he had the time to like really put together his Body video parts work. and everything, everything that he'd done. And he'd gone through a lot of adversity too, mm -hmm. you know, to get to where he was. But I, I thought that was, I think that's a better, I understand what you're saying, a better time. You know, for but sure. it was so early too. So it was I mean, super early. I mean, this is it's got to start somewhere, yeah. and obviously, I get what you're saying, yeah. but it doesn't discredit the fact that it was well deserved. Yeah. No, right? Yeah, yeah and yeah. I appreciate that. You know, it's yeah. just that I feel like, you know, I had some things that I needed to deal with personally to be able to actually enjoy that moment mm -hmm. more. You know, mm -hmm. or or to actually use that moment to like get me to the next place that I wanted to be, you know, and that did, that didn't work for me like that. Mm -hmm. You know, what was the next place? Because like after that, I mean, you got a pro shoe on vans, yeah. all this stuff. So things were going, but maybe not what you wanted. Is that what I'm taking away from this? Well, I just, you know, I, it's when you're, I, I kind of consider like skateboarding during that era as like being an artist. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, as an artist, whether you're an actor or a musician or a whatever painter, you want to be able to explore your creative spectrum. You know what I'm saying? And like when you get labeled and you get notoriety for something 
there it creates an expectation mm -hmm. for you sure know? and some people like i've heard andrew reynolds talk about it you know it's like the front side flip yes. right like he's gonna take that front side flip with him all the way to the grave you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. he's and he like rightfully show so right yeah. i didn't think like that you know to me it was like i didn't want to be in the label that you came up with for me you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying this like a like a switch god label or, or whatever, whatever, whatever the is. label whatever is. it was okay. it's like i didn't want to be that mm. you know so i started skating vert for example yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I was like, i'm yeah. gonna go skate vert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Switch like, it up a little bit, yeah. yeah. So whatever. You <laughs> know, guys literally literally switch know it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys think they know no, me? No, so it was, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to fully articulate I what that. I'm trying to convey, but I think that, you know, um, it didn't, you know, it was it, it made things more difficult for uh, me than better. Okay. But I'm not ungrateful for the experience. For sure, I just want to, you know. Yes, say that, yes. You know? No, I, I think I understand. It's you I, get put on a pedestal, you get put under a spotlight more. Yeah. There's more. Yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, and I, I, and I, I don't, I don't have a problem with any of that. It's mm -hmm. just I wasn't at a place yet to mm. be able to deal with it. You know what right. I mean? I didn't have the emotional maturity, you mm -hmm. know, or sort of like the you know, the support group that I needed around me. You know, it's funny because I was telling you about Stacy, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I essentially wanted Stacy to be the person that guided my career. Yeah. But he was gone, you know? So I ended up in a van that's like drinking beer and partying and, you know, it became a whole different thing. I'm not saying that didn't happen at the Bones Brigade, but it was a different environment, you know? Mm. And, um, Whatever. It yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. You know. No, I, I, I actually became a better skater later on, but for myself, you uh -huh. know, I, I, I put in the time and the effort and, you know, I had a different focus later on, but it was not, it was just a different time. It sure. Wasn't, it wasn't sure. my time anymore. I mean, you listen, know? a 21 year old kid is still trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, here you are, skater of the year. You're, I mean, you're on the, the, the best team, real skateboards, and then not like I said, not so, so long. You had a pro shoe on Vans. Mm -hmm. Did that come after huge. you won? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I you got? That. Did you get on Vans from winning Skater of the Year? Pretty much. Or? No, I've been sponsored by Vans for a long time. Already. Okay. Yeah. Got the shoe right here. Yeah. Ooh, a little toe cap on there. Yeah. I could see the pressure and expectations being definitely a little bit overwhelming especially in that young ripe age for sure like, well the thing is it's like there was a lot there was a lot of there was still a lot to learn mm -hmm. you know and i didn't want to go and just be that guy all the time you know what i'm saying like yeah. i wanted to be able to you know i think that's why a lot of skaters later on when they had money they have training facilities and whatnot it's like you want to be able to go experiment and try and fail and be you know totally. it felt hard to do that yeah you know, it felt hard to do that. For sure. Because it was still so new. Like, what I should yeah. have been doing is latching on to you. And, and uh, <laughs> honestly, what I, when I think back on it, it's not a regret. But what I really should have done is I should have been in L.A. And I should have been with Eric and, and Austin, Mike. Mike. And I should have been with you guys. And I should have surrounded myself with what you guys were doing at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that would have been a healthy thing for me, mm. you know. We, are, we definitely are we're latching on to each other oh, so yeah. it's like like our schooling so to say you yeah. know which was very helpful oh, obviously yeah. <laughs> to have someone that's like you and we're all in the same you know we're all in the same boat here you know yeah I mean? no for sure but i mean i didn't do that instead right. i did my own thing yeah. which is fine mm -hmm. but looking back on it you know to be great you got to be around the greatest, the greatest yeah. you know what i'm saying do you feel like when you won skater the year you're just like well i made it I can chill now. No, nah, no, nah, mm. I didn't really think like that at all. Mm. But I definitely got, I was, I, I'd be honest with you. I felt lost after oh. for a period of time, you know, because it's like you reach this, you know, I didn't know what goal, like, you know, it, that wasn't even a goal, right? Yeah. Like it just happened to me, you know, it was like yeah. it happened, right? So I was like, how do, where do I reset? Like, what do I, I didn't know what to do. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. A bit confusing. Yeah, it was. Hmm. So then I, and, and, you know, I did get super into like, uh, later on like a few years later um you know i had different things like different goals like i wanted to skate in the x games for example mm -hmm. you know because i was new 
Um, so I ended up, you know, at the time you had to qualify. So I spent a lot of time at the skate park kind of under, trying to understand, like, what does it mean to, like, do well in a contest? So I had an actual, like, regimen. Like, I would go, you know, Lance could tell you, you know, because he would come skate with me. And I, you know, for six hours, you know, I'd be at the park and I would go through like a whole thing. I mean, at the time, like you could take me anywhere and I could hard flip, kick flip, front kick flip, front board, whatever. Like I had so many tricks on lock, you know, like for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I went to, to actually, I got a really funny story. <laughs> Anyway, I did go to a qualifier and I ended up second. I think Matt Beach won. Oh, and wow. then we qualified and we went to the X Games that mm -hmm. year. It was 1997. Okay. So I skated in it in uh, San Diego. I ended up not doing well there. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, that was just kind of a thing. Like it was a goal to kind okay. of do that that right. one time, you know, because I'd already toured everywhere. Seems like this know. is like another like check check off check it off the list yeah exactly yeah. like i wanted to be in the top 20 world ranking i guess mm. world cup at the time so i was in the top 20 in 97 amazing yeah. is that something that, that was that was just for myself that wasn't like you know nothing's gonna i'm not gonna get anything it's just i want to be in that on that list right mm. and you you're know. not street skating that much anymore it's no i street skated all the time you know okay. i still skated outside you yeah. know we we're filming for you know i think i ended up on black label and then we started filming i wasn't into filming then uh, but uh yeah we you know i filmed a couple more video parts because mm -hmm. skaters nowadays they're like they train for contests they're fully training oh yeah they're kind of they don't really skate the streets all that much yeah. they're just kind of focusing oh on yeah i can see why yeah it's very competitive now. yeah it's different well, yeah. what was the funny story you want to tell oh so it's amazing so i go you know, one of these contests, it's so embarrassing. This is like one of life's most embarrassing moments. <laughs> so, I love that it's a funny story too, yeah. Well, it's funny now. <laughs> uh, so hopefully someone uh, th that watches your show was there at this okay. contest. So I go to this contest. It's out somewhere back east where it's humid, right? It's hot, 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 you know, and it's humid. And it's like almost my turn to skate, right? But I got to take shit. You know, so I'm like, oh, where am I gonna go? So oh, I gotta go to the oh the porta potty. I go to the porta potty. It's like overflowing. Uh -huh. You know, it's oh. disgusting, right? So you know, I handle my business, and I'm like, oh, I gotta you know like wipe, you know, but I'm gotta stay away from whatever is in front of me right there. So I'm like doing my thing, and I'm kind of leaning against the door, you know. Oh, and it's one of those latches, and it just the the door just goes open. <laughs> So I'm completely naked, right? <laughs> Haven't wiped your ass. Toilet paper in hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like on the ground, you know? I'm literally, you know, they usually have them up off the ground. So I'm just like yeah. lying on the ground. I'm looking around. There's thousands of people looking at me. And I was thinking, this man, this really feels wrong. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Something about this doesn't feel right, you know? Oh, that's amazing. So I get up. I'm in the thing. I'm like, how the hell am I going to get out of here? <laughs> you know? So anyway, I just was like, just go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the one I ended up getting second place at, you know? Perfect. Wait, so did people that you knew, did they see that? They're, no, it was just, you know, it was, you know, a lot Fans. of times, a lot of times they would do these events at like spring break or whatever, you know? So I definitely wasn't getting a date after that trip. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you the guy that <laughs> fell out of the porta potty? Yeah, yeah. The toilet paper in the hand. In oh hand. <laughs> so that probably just took all the nervousness away. Oh, then you were just like, Fuck, let's fine. go skate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not worried about this shit. <laughs> what worse can it, what, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, exactly. that? Oh, man. I so, love that. That's great. Yeah. Was that um tip? Don't lean against the door no, of the no. porta potty <laughs> anywhere where it's humid. <laughs> I don't know what the humid has to do with it. Well, because but like, it's they're all made out of like that thin oh, plastic, plastic. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's expanded. It and it yeah, just it just, went. It just uh, yeah. There's no you know. Saying, yeah. yeah, it was like a floppy handle. <laughs> Maybe use different kind of plastic in those types I think of areas. They, they've come but, a long way since then, I bet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that would happen in like Tommy Boy, like something like funny Chris Farley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> So I want to know, because you had mentioned Black Label, yeah. right? Because you eventually went to Black Label. But mm -hmm. I, I want to know what happened with Real. Because you went to from Real to the firm, right? Mm -hmm. And then Black Label. So what happened in that kind of, uh, of those three events right there? 
in San Jose, there was a guy named Ron Powers, mm. and he had started. Um, it was at a Calvary Chapel, which is a like a franchise of churches around the world, and he had a skate church, right? And I'd met a guy named uh, Craig Smith there, and uh, I started going. And I had, you know, grew. I grew up Muslim, mm -hmm. and then I, when I, my dad got remarried, um, I ended up uh, in like a Catholic. I went to Catholic school, and then I went to like a Protestant Christian school. So mm. I got involved. You know, I started learning about. There was always some spiritual element like in our lives as children, you mm -hmm. know, growing up. I think that's very common, you know, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So anyhow, um, you know, I later on, it was kind of around that time, the skater of the year time, you know, mm -hmm. where I was feeling really disconnected and alone. And so I latched on to, you know, I ended up kind of very much getting involved with that Calvary Chapel and like the whole Christian church. And, you know, I was like, I was probably like the church's number one proselytizing uh, believer, you know, at that time. You okay. Know? So I was very involved in that. And that really started to influence, you know, my life at hmm. that time. And uh, so I actually took a sabbatical. So I, I actually walked into all my sponsors. I, I listened to this guy, Tony Campolo. He was a sociology professor, and he was also a advisor to like presidents and big Fortune 500 CEOs and stuff like that. So somehow I'd got this video and I'd watched it, and through that video, it inspired me to like go a different direction. In, in my life, hmm. you know, at that age. So I, I literally quit all my sponsors. And that was right before my shoe came out. Oh, that was bef <laughs> right oh, before. Right wow. before, right before. And I remember I sat down with a um, really great guy. He was the CEO of Vans uh -huh. at the time. His name was uh, Walter Schoenfeld, old guy, you know. He and his investment group or whatever at the time had taken Vans uh, I think really helped him bring him out of bankruptcy and took him on a road show and raised all this money to like rebuild the company, mm. you know? And he looked at me and he was like, he basically knew I was burnt. And he's like, you just need some time off. So he essentially was like, we're still going to put your shoe out and whatever. Just take the time that you need. And okay. I was like, okay. Wow. So he was really gracious, you know, in that yeah. way. What about promoting the shoe? And I mean, you know, they had stuff already in the works, okay. you know, so it kind of like came out. And I did, a, and when it came out, um, I had gone on a tour. Like I went mm -hmm. around the world. So I went like, you know, I was all over the world in Europe, Japan, all over, like promoting okay. the shoe coming gotcha. out. Gotcha. Um, but then I did take that time off. And then, you know, because of, the fact that I was like so heavily like searching at the time, you know, mm -hmm. spiritually, um, you know, I kind of latched onto Lance, you know, cause Lance, mm. you know, I didn't know even, but you know, I guess he's a, you know, he's a Christian and I was like, Oh, well I need to be with these Christian skaters. Mm. I kind of called Lance up and was like, I'm riding for you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You know, that was a conversation pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so anyhow, that's, that's what happened, you know? So I, I ended up there. And then uh, when World went, I'm sorry, World, when the firm ended up at uh, Birdhouse or whatever their uh, distribution. Blitz or Splits. Blitz, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to go, mm. you know, so uh, I ended up, I actually ended up on Real after that for a small period of time. I, why didn't you want to go to Blitz? I just didn't have, I, I don't know. I didn't like didn't it. didn't feel right. I don't know. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like it. I didn't want to go there. Because before it was just run by Lance. Yes. And then yeah. now he's going to this distribution. Yeah. And maybe you didn't, you didn't like it. Well, the thing is, there was some talk at the time of the firm potentially going to girl. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I was super into that. Like I wanted, I, I was like, yeah, he used to tell Lance on the talk. Let's get, let's talk to Rick. Let's, you know, let's yeah, make this happen. Totally. You know, that was I, like '94. Like I remember, we went on a, a 
tour and the firm was with us. Yeah, yeah. I think I went on yeah, one yeah, of those trips. Were, yeah, sure. but I was like, yeah, I want to be, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I would be down for that. Right. You know? But I didn't want to go over to Blitz. And then, uh, you know, I was at, you know, I was at real for a short period of time. And that was really painful, you know, to like tell them I'm going to be, I'm not going to be here any longer. So the thing is like, I wasn't really in the spotlight. It Mm. didn't really matter at the time, like where I was, but I did want to skate still. And I grew up with Jason. He was on black label. I wanted to be together. So that was my intention was to, for us to have a time while we're pro to be able to spend time together and skate together okay. on tour. Because when we were kids, you know, Jason went and rode for SMA and Santa Cruz and Creature, and we were always separated, you know, and Tim too, you know. So it was like our crew, we, you know, we would see each other at events, but we never got to go and do all that stuff together. Yeah, you I know? can see that, yeah. yeah. So that was kind of my draw. Right. You know? And I love John. I actually rode a lot of Lacero boards um, when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I always loved Lucero. I mean, after when you, I mean, you found a home pretty much for mm-hmm. um, Black Label. Mm-hmm. I mean, you wrote for them for a long time from like 2000 to 2017. 17 oh, wow. years. Yeah. So. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you had a good run on there. Yeah. yeah. What was the video oh, yeah. that you guys did? Um, oh, this one right here. Was it Label Kills? Yeah, yeah. Label Kills. Yeah. So yeah. good. Oh, wow. That's the. That rail. You might have been the first one to ever skate that spot, really, huh? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think Mary Jerry <laughs> Sue or someone skated it before. Well, no. Now people gap out to it all the time. Oh yeah. yeah. There's not even a flat bar in the middle. They just gap out. Oh, to I the, see that. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So I mean, at this time we filmed, but my heart wasn't that into the filming. You, you know? just wanted to skate. Well, here's the thing. So. I was never that into filming and shooting photos or any of that. I came from the era kind of before video, I feel like. I know video is such an important part of, you know, the skater's career. Right. But uh, I don't know. I was like the lie. I I almost like think of it as an artist, like a a band. Like you want to see them live. So I was, my thing was like, and I think this is part of the reason why I made an impression is because I wanted to make an impression when I went somewhere yeah. and, and, and I was there live, you know, like huh. I wanted you to feel that I, when I was gone, I wanted you to feel that I'm gone and yeah. I, and that, and feel me while I was there. Mm, you see what I'm saying? Totally. And so, that was my conscious thought around huh. being a pro. Very interesting because like, I, I mean, it's true when you see skating live and you see your favorite skater live, like it is an impression. It's an it's impact a, on that person, you know, sure. but video parts again, I mean, like you, we, yeah. you, you came from the era of like contests turning pro, right. Mm-hmm. Then it turned, then it t- turned into video parts and magazines, right. you know, as being the, what is thrust you forward to getting a pro board. Yeah. I guess, you know, I came from the time where, I don't remember if I don't know if you guys remember like the Z team or whatever, of like Z roller. No, not Z boys. Like there was like the, the Z roller. Yeah. So was that part of Z? Uh-huh. Well, I just remember being like, I don't want to be like those guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I remember seeing ads where they're doing this crazy. The photos were insane. And then I went to a contest and I was like, dude, they can't even land that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not like that. They're they're <laughs> all. So it's like they're posing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, I don't want to be like that. So my thing was like, I want to be like, when you see me skate, it's live and and you feel it. Like I make you feel like, so I, when I went to a spot or a contest or whatever, like you felt my presence mm-hmm. or I just wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing, I was, I shouldn't be there. Right. You know what I mean? Well, you, you listen to like music. Sometimes people are way better in like the studio. And then you see him live, and you're like, ooh, that was kind of harsh. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it's the same thing for skating, right? Yeah. Like, you want to show up and be as good as your record that you put it's out, It's not right? even good. Yeah. It's just about, like, 
when you when when I'm there, if I'm there, you better have felt that I was there. I yeah. better and and you either loved me or hated me, but you knew I was there. One way, one way or another. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's all. Hundred percent. That's, That's what it came down to. I love it. And in the video, I was like, you know. I guess going back to the video is like mm -hmm. video at the time was like try something a million times get it and i felt it was a little contrived because yeah of course once you put all that together yeah you made all those tricks on video but let me go see you live yeah you feel me totally different and you know certain you know a lot of skaters couldn't be couldn't get down live right you watch them and you're like oh they can't skate eric was an exception Costume. Co Carol was an exception, Carol, yeah. you know. Uh, basically, a lot of the guys on Girl mm -hmm. were an exception. Like at the time, like right. you could film a sick part, but live, they were live you for film, sure. You for know sure. what I mean? Look at McCrank. Like, oh wow. I yeah. mean, Rick McCrank. You're just like, oh my god, this guy kills the like everything. Yeah, you. No one else needs to skate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? turned it on. He turned it on for sure. He definitely you know? is that guy. So yeah. anyway, like that's that was what i was going for mm -hmm. you know what i mean right, right so i right. think filming the video part like i i kind of had that feeling from the z stuff that i saw <laughs> and it just turned me off you know so you weren't putting a hundred percent into the filming aspect no. i mean the, when we filmed the real video that was live that was it. the first okay. real video that was basically a camera following us around mm -hmm. but we i wasn't like oh i gotta get this trick you know, this, right. that stuff was just happening. Right. You know? right. This right here. Yeah. This was pretty, pretty much following me. And this was, uh, what video was this? Real? The real video. Yeah, the real video. Yeah. I always liked to skate with the manual pads like this. 1993. I grew up skating a spot like that, and I always yeah. thought that was cool. Yeah, that was, we'd go to Skate Pal. Oh, yeah, um, that was, that's in, yeah, Galita. And that's in Santa Barbara. Or in Galita. Santa Barbara yeah, yeah, we'd skate this garage. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't really see too many un too much underground uh, parking lot footage these days. Yeah. yeah, best ground in those spots, man. Dude, oh, so, so good, good man. Yeah. The way it sucks sometimes. Oh, yeah, the grounds are best. Psh, yeah. Santa Monica Beach, right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Solomon. I always try like we're we switched nose manual the table in this part, right? Mm -hmm. That was kind of that opened up a lot. I think people really tripped out in there, right? For sure. I think so. It's a West yeah. LA courthouse. It is a yeah. courthouse. Oh well, yeah, we used to come down and skate LA a lot. Yeah. Um, Did people think? Oh, you know what? You know, I wanted to tell you a fun fact about that skate camp where Mickey and those guys wanted to beat yeah, me yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, That was the first day Lavar skated. He yeah, ever McBride. skated? Ever skated? What do you oh, mean? First time skated. getting on a board? Ever? Ever? Wow. Yeah. How is this even? Who? How, how do you? What? What? Because what? because I remember he 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 was a kid just right there in the projects and he got on a skateboard. And he had never skated before. And, and by the end of the day, he was doing fakie rocks on this the mini is, ramp. Whoa, whoa. This is that, at that's the demo you, you, that you, you were. Get LeVar oh, on this totally, show. totally. But this was at the that demo in the was, project yeah, that you were talking it, about. It wasn't even a demo, it was a skate camp. It was oh, like a, camp. a skate camp for kids, like in the in the hood. How do you mm -hmm. remember that this I mean, how do you remember that it was LeVar? I, I just, just because cause was, I rem, well, because I became friends with him after. Got one. it, right. And uh, and plus he did a rock fake and I, first. yeah and and he and I just started seeing him skating around and he'd be at EMB and uh, wow and it's funny because he he used to come down and skate in San Jose and he'd come stay with me or Jason mm. Adams and he loved to come down there and you remember that movie What About Bob totally oh, yeah so <laughs> we used to call him La Bob because <laughs> you know we take him down to the train station and to go home and then like. An hour later, he'd be back at the door. <laughs> like, how the hell did he get back here? <laughs> LaBob. 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 Yeah. What about Bob? Yeah, wow, man. He was, I mean, he, well, he took truly. Switch. He took Switch to another level, too. Oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he was so consistent. good, bro. Yeah, him and Marcus. Yeah, Marcus as well. Oh, He's yeah. been probably consistent. Just, consistent. Pull up to EMB and just, he'd do everything. Yeah. You see him in the videos doing the marathon lines, and you're just like, how does this kid just keep going? He's got everything on lock. Yeah. So he got good fast. Oh, man. real fast. Yeah. Yeah. So Black Label, I mean, 17 years. Mm -hmm. It's a good run. Yeah. What what ultimately, you ended up back on Powell, mm -hmm. right? What what ultimately happened over there? Yeah, that was a tough one, you know, because, uh, you know, I love John, and, you know, I've been there a long time, Jason. I don't know if Jason was on label anymore. I don't know if he went to Enjoy. Or, I mean, he he kind of left and came back. He did go to Enjoy. You know, he did, yeah, you know yeah, I so that. Anyhow, um, Powell approached me and said 
what what do you think about having the board that never happened you know okay because we were gonna okay. you know i think guy rudy gabriel apollo javante myself we would have all turned pro there had, had things kept just 100%. going along right so um and i thought about it for a year maybe longer and uh i started thinking more about it and i was like man i wonder if court is still doing the graphics he, who did all the original mm. pal graphics mm. and uh i said if court will do my graphic i would be down to do it and they said yeah well how he's going to do your graphic this is the original uh court was the original guy who did all the graphics mm -hmm. originally yes because i remember there was a the mike valley when he was going to go pro for them yeah. there was like a different artist coming in or was it a different artist or a different well sean cliver mm -hmm. sean cliver okay, was right. at pal he did ray's board mm. and he started doing boards i think he did adam mcnatt's board okay. with uh, claudia schiffer and all mm -hmm. that stuff because mike wanted the he wanted the elephant mm -hmm. done in the way that was before they yes. wanted to give him the bug they wanted to give him a oh, bug. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't recall. Okay. And he was like, nah. He said, no. <laughs> I mean, he's 17 years old. Yeah. Saying, no, I want this graphic yeah. because it fit in line with like before, before yeah. what they were changing. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you got the original. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is so, this this one? And that's it. Yeah. The this, when did this come out? Well, must have been 2018 or okay. something. Okay, so or, pretty, it's pretty recent. It's been yeah, a few oh, years. Yeah. It's yeah, it, yeah, you know, it's come out. It, what I like about it too is, and that's what I liked about boards in the 80s is, you'd see that board and it would come out, and then like a few months later, it would come out in a different color. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, so mm. it's not like you got to come up with a new graphic every mm. month every or two season, months or whatever. whatever. Like, yeah. This is your graphic. Yeah. And it's yeah. just gonna kind of come up with new colors exactly. and stuff yeah. like that now, back then they would live for days bro they oh, people yeah. would have a board for like a full year oh yeah yeah but yeah. powell's been known to be doing that right like even like andy anderson has like the yeah, same, same graphic thing. for a while yeah for, sure. for a couple of years right uh -huh. for sure they're the only ones that seemed like they stayed true to that <laughs> yeah you know i don't know the series to me got out of control you know what i'm saying yeah it like you lost the um the uh what do you call it the individual in the mm -hmm. series and i you know it's like you lost that uh influence of like the actual pro in the graphic when you do a series sure yeah you know and, well too many of them you mean and i get that you know when you go into a skate shop you see a series and you know the boards have this look to them but you're only getting one of them that's true, but exactly, you know. So I like graphics that are individual graphics for the skater, right? Um, you know, right. That's right. just stuff. That, so, like in our shop at Pizza Nista, for example, like that's what I want in there. Mm -hmm. I want you to come in, and I want every board to look different. Right. Those are the ones that have the long lasting impressions, anyway. Like you know, for us back in like the 80s, late eighties and early nineties, I just remember again those boards were on the wall for so long that I'm like, dude, that that graphic's so right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it just resonated with you. Oh yeah. You know, a lot longer than these graphics these days because yeah. they're like here and then they're gone yeah you know 100 i wonder what changed the fabric of that you know what i mean like i wonder is it the skate shops that are asking hey we want some new stuff we want our shelves to look different steve all rocco. the time steve rocco well yeah rocco i mean that's the thing i loved about rocco is he you know yeah he the graphics changed and that yeah. that was exciting right i right. did i, I like but here's the thing they weren't doing series like everyone like when your graphic changed it was a new graphic and i think that's why um those graphics from that or those boards from that time are mm -hmm. so valuable to people because sure. think about it like you got a board come out you got what 200 of them and yeah. then they're gone right. and then there's like a new 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 graphic you know so that i w thought was cool mm -hmm. i like that you know? But then the subjects that they were being like on, on these graphics were so like oh yeah they were crazy yeah. yeah you know yeah I don't know if you could do graphics like that oh no. I think mm -hmm. people would be appalled oh, oh my big god time. this I mean, some, of these, some of these graphics had to come in a black bag yeah I remember <laughs> they'll still sell yeah. yeah I'm sure they would you know I just think you know there's a lot of sensitivity yeah in this world and no doubt. rightfully so you know in a lot of ways but. Yeah, those graphics were ahead of their time, man. 
really. Well, know? he was pushing the envelope. Yeah. Definitely. He was pushing. He was he wanted to stir the pot. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe they the they just kind of kept up with that kind of Cuz I do. I I mean I I it's it's funny cuz like to being pro now I mean dur, 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 I mean how many pro boards have you had? Um probably like close to 200. Yeah. Wow. Give or take. I, mean, I don't I don't I don't think I've had that many, but it's up there yeah. with the amount of graphics that I mean my house is just boards 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 just every because i save all the graphics yeah. i think it's special when the graphic is designed around the personality or interests of the skater yeah. yeah and i think that when they're not designed that way i think they lose that specialness there's a special charm to it. It's a, I mean, that, that's kind of where I was getting at that, you know, it's, it's like, not going to, you know, change the way. Well, I, I actually disagree. Here's the thing. I'm ahead. disagreeing with myself. Listen, I love it. I, <laughs> think, I think that when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to skate boards that inspired me, you know, yeah. and you know, everyone's different. And people are inspired by different things. I was inspired by riding boards of the pros that I was emulating. And I got power, some power from that. I don't know what it was, but I felt some juice. I could relate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I feel that, you know, you don't get that when you have a board that's blank. You can still rip a blank board or a, a logo board mm -hmm. or whatever. Trust me, I've seen it. You know, you can do it. But there's something special about you know, that feeling that you get when you are excited about yeah. riding a board that is of, of a pro or someone that you look up to or admire or, or emulating. I just think there's for sure something different about that. There's a, you know, uh, skate, you know, that's what skateboarding is to me. Like I, it, it's, a, it's only about how it makes me feel yeah. when I'm doing it that matters. Mm -hmm. you know that for sure that, and and i think that that contributes to that moment mm. for me especially if you've seen that pro skating that board and like you said like you i mean when you're young like that and you're trying to be you, i mean i i would summon eric costin you know i wanted to be like eric costin yeah. you know i would try to emulate little things that he did and stuff like that mm -hmm. or like i mean even when i when i met him and was skating with him i was still trying to emulate him i'd stand on his board and be like okay i need to make my board exactly like this board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like I need to copy I've this board. I've sit on his board. <laughs> yeah. I, I've tried to copy it. Yeah. You know, the only it's funny you mentioned the the blank boards because the only time that I really f gained that power was when when everybody was skating the blank boards. Mm -hmm. When it was everybody, mm -hmm. the whole world camp bl blind, they mm -hmm. were skating the blank boards because I felt that I wanted to be like them and sure. I was getting that power yeah. from a blank. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think that you know I, I think, know what you're saying with that for sure. And that that was a statement, right? Yeah. At that time. It was. To say to to ride those. Mm. You know? And I think there was a place for that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I just it, personally it was because we were taking too many boards. <laughs> 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 They're like, We're giving you blanks, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't but, well, yeah, and they didn't last very long. No. They yeah, yeah, yeah. The way we were skating at that time, they definitely didn't last long. Yeah. So the move back to Powell was just the right fit. It was the right thing to do. It felt right. Yeah. To, go, felt, that, to I mean, go that route and actually ha turn pro again, you know, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, that, it's kind know. of full circle, you yeah. know, it's like where I started and it made sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always had a lot of respect for Stacy mm -hmm. and George. And um, it's easy. It, I don't want to say it's easy. It's one thing to get to the top. It's another thing to endure all the things that companies like Powell have gone through to remain in skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, regardless of what someone, it doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, like for me, like it only matters what I think and how things make me feel. Sure. Right. I'm not doing like, I personally am not doing anything, you know, as an artist, I think it's important to, make art for yourself if someone else likes it that's just a bonus yeah you know what i'm saying mm. so um well, i feel like that's kind of how it, it's important for me to approach everything that i do or think about in that way and um you know so i i really am stoked on the pal 
Yeah. You know, no, that's well yeah. put. You know, you do art for yourself, and if somebody else likes it, it's a bonus. Yeah. You know, it's so, and that's with skating or whatever. Yeah. Know? I was uh, skating today actually at South Pass, and you know, this guy recognized me. We started talking, and you know, I told him, I said, "Man, I spent the last." over the last decade like trying to go somewhere so no one recognized me so i could just skate and without anyone talking to me <laughs> so anyway it was, we were laughing but um funny. what was he like oh you're the pizza guy yeah no. <laughs> exactly no but you know it's uh yeah it feels good for me to be able to skate and just at this point i just skate for how it makes me feel mm -hmm. and um when we first started and, and that's all started. and that's all that that's that's enough yeah you know i'm not i don't want to be in a photo or in a video or in an ad or anything what about on mm. a podcast well <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ha I'm happy to be here to talk to you guys and i think that you know it's it's fun to be able to sit around and you know share all these stories oh my god yeah. i've loved every no single doubt. second of this you know, you know? i mean going from uh you know back in the day um you coming down here and skating with guy mm -hmm. and rudy and, and gabriel rodriguez and seeing that they're the that the disconnect from san san jose to la mm -hmm. and the progression was is crazy to me yeah i mean there were guys that were on that level henry mike oh know? yeah 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 and, i mean for it, sure it's just you know but it was i just hadn't seen those guys you know like mm -hmm. the, and and actually that was i want to say before that was before so i was in high school i was probably 15 when i got sponsored by pal okay so i hadn't met i don't think i skated with mike and henry yet you know so okay i hadn't seen them skate either it was just our little crew and so there was definitely a lot of differences but there was a you know between what was happening in san francisco that i saw and what was happening in la mm -hmm. it was very uh similar hmm. you sure know, you know sure what I'm and henry was he was inventing tricks every day henry is the best yeah truly. i mean i think he was the best skater from our era right he's my my best yeah you know he's on my top three have no to, yeah. yeah i'd have to agree for sure i mean the the amount of tricks that he was coming up with and the way he did it yeah because he had power and right. style mm -hmm. for and sure yeah i mean i remember i vividly remember seeing henry skate for the first time and i was just <laughs> blown away at emb no, no i saw him actually the first time i ever saw him skate was actually at a contest in the desto or turlock or something mm -hmm. you know he huh. was doing the most amazing big spin backside disasters on this quarter pipe you know he was just way ahead and, yeah. it, and it was like he did it with power and style mm -hmm. and no one was doing anything like that you know damn at the time shout out to henry right now because he's still putting shit down oh bro. yeah even right straight now. up i mean he's he's out there working you know he you could tell that he loves skateboarding yeah he's, no, yeah, he's doing the heart he, he did backside foot fake emmanuel the other day how's that i mean when you've been skating for that long and doing tricks like that that's gnarly yeah yeah, no, yeah. yeah. and the ledge tricks that too. ledge trick that he did uh back 180 to over crook mm -hmm. on uh i don't know oh, the waller to, street at the ledges? waller street ledges bro. yeah yeah i was tripping off that that's like if I'm doing that now, at this <laughs> age, we, we doing some good shit. That's like, come yeah, on, no, bro. Henry Rich, man. <laughs> yeah. bro. He's forever. Mm -hmm. uh, so good. And then, but what about um, inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame? Mm -hmm. How'd you, uh, congrats on that. How'd Thank you, you feel? Hey, congrats on that. Doing, I mean, that's an honor. Yeah, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm just a really grateful person, yeah. I guess, these days for a lot of things. But uh, I got a lot of gratitude and... You know, I don't decide to be Sodi and this, that, and the other thing. You know, these right, are all right. other people's, you know, ideas. And uh, that's you know. the beauty of it all, though, right? Yeah. So it's at this like, point, you know, in my life, you know, I got it's cool for my family, you know, my wife, Joan, and my yeah, kids, yeah. Zephyr and Sabbath. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, positive memories, you know, and, mm -hmm. and things to share with them as they get older. Yeah. You know? For sure. Right. So it feels good. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. What about Big Brother's most beautiful skater? <laughs> I don't know. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> that ugly mug up there. <laughs> wait, wait, what year is that? 
Was that right around the time when you got Skater of the Year? The yeah. 10 most beautiful. <laughs> I think, yeah, that was the, Good, I think you guys have that here. It's like uh, the Tim Tim Gavin had the cover of the box. Oh, yeah. the, um, right, to the right, right, yeah. right above you, to you. your left. Sugar coated peas. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. So that was, that was the magazine that came in that box. Oh, I, think wow. I, I think I have it still, yeah. actually, in my collection. Yeah. Oh, wow. Big Brother was so so. That cool. was such a great trip. I I'd, I'd never met Cossack or Earl Parker. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So um, you know they came up in full World Industries mode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they had a brand new Cadillac. You know, bumping Frank Black. I remember blasting out of the windows, and they picked us up. I was with Sean and Jason, and we went and skated all day. You know, was that a back tail of that in that yeah. photo right there? Yeah. And it, you go nowhere. It's like this little pit. You yeah. like slide down, and then you're dead. You yeah. like, like, <laughs> land in a in a well. Uh, and then we got the skater of the year cover uh, right above you, which mm -hmm. is. Uh, I mean, look at bro. Come yeah, on, model man. right there, dude. You're a beautiful man, right yeah. there. Look at that good looking guy there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> got big you know really good cheekbones yeah. Yeah. been working on it <laughs> it's chewing that pizza, pizza. that's what that's what oh it is. yeah the pizza yeah, there it yeah, is. Yeah. i could sit here and listen to these stories all day long and it's yeah. weird to be like you got any other stories but like mm -hmm. i'm i'm from this time era and like all the stuff and it's i love it great i'm eating this up salmon just like a slice of pie Ooh, yeah. that sounds good right about now i know we would have brought pizza for you guys but we're closed today that's why. Oh yeah, oh, it's that's Mondays. Why, that's why I brought these. Oh, hey. oh, oh what got, it, what are we, okay. I got these right here. Got a little what gift card, Tim. Tim. Got Kelly, one for Tim Kelly. Jerron, here. Give okay, me thank Chris. you. Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. So Ooh. if you're Roger and JC, so if you guys are ever downtown or in Pasadena, I'm gonna make a special trip. What if I'm in Tokyo? I don't know if they'll work there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you bring this to Tokyo, you got to pay double. I got to. <laughs> Let's see how much this is. Five thousand dollars. Whoa! Lifetime subscription. That's a year. Amazing. That's a year supply. Wow. For a couple Thank years, you. actually. Yeah, next time you do a manual, you're gonna snap your tail off. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious pizza. I recommend anybody out there listening or, or watching this podcast right now. If you're in LA, go. Visit Pizza Nista. Yes. You won't be disappointed. Will and not. the one uh, with the skate shop in it. Yeah. I think that's an amazing concept. I want to go try the uh, soft serve. Mm -hmm. I think I, I don't think there's... That's my new trick mm. that I invented. <laughs> what is it? The skate shop pizza shop. Skate yeah. shop pizza shop. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard of it. You're the first Skated. one? Yeah. Have you, have you ever seen another one anywhere? Nope. I feel like I've seen like a coffee shop maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah like coffee no shop, record? skate shop. Record? Record yeah. shop? Yeah. Hair, I've seen a haircut Willie. place. Barber. Oh, yeah. Willie's Workshop. Willie's Workshop is a... It is, was. It was a barber shop, right? Barber shop. But skate shop, pizza shop. Nope. Love it. Hey, do you get the salad there, too, right? You can. All right. There you go. I'm just saying there's options. It's not just... What you, you know, we're, we're open Are there deals? <laughs> do you have, like, deals there? Like, if you buy a board or a complete, you get, like, a free slice of pie. Oh, yeah. Like, we have a deal. You get... You get a... So our our pizzas are eighteen inches, right? There, you could feed four people. So you get a cheese pizza with every deck. Wait a minute! Oh. You're telling me I can go in and buy a deck? Yeah, and you'll walk out with your deck and a whole cheese pie. Amazing, for free. The pie. Yeah, for the free. pie comes with the board. Like grip tape, or too? is the, <laughs> or is the pizza fifty nine ninety nine and the deck is free? We could do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to pay sixty bucks for a pizza, we'll, well send you home with a deck. If I get a free deck, <laughs> yeah, could be incredible. Yeah, yeah or man. the other thing we've been doing is if you buy a complete, you know, if mm -hmm. you buy the whole thing, you can just pick any pie off the menu. Love oh, that, dude. Like that. That's okay. a great incentive, to be honest. It's good. Yeah, based on where we are with food in general, inflation's pretty bad. So if you, mm. if you need a board. You well, yeah, food. and then you're partying with your buddies. You <laughs> there know? you go. I mean, you go to the skate park or, or wherever, and you got a pizza, and you got a new board, and you're stoked. Yeah. Straight up. What's your favorite uh, type of pizza? Like, what's your favorite flavor, toppings? I'm more into plain, you know? So yeah. I I like, we do a Sicilian, which is, I like bread, you know? So yeah. it's like a mm. thick, you know, it's like a thick, you know, our, our pizza is sourdough. So yeah. it's kind of like a, you know, proofs, you know, rises in the pan, and then we... Uh, drench it in olive oil 
you know so then it's like uh and kind then the sauce starving. and cheese so then oh my gosh i don't so know good. it has a really great crust so i really like that and i just like the plain cheese you know do you guys, you guys don't do like this stuff crust cheese whatever the whatever it is we haven't figured out that yet yeah is that even cool? Is that even cool? I don't even know. You know what? I think it is. You know, um, I have to be honest. Like, I I don't know how these chains, you know, like the, the big franchises do stuff like that. Because, honestly, changing, like, a, a one ingredient, you know, you got to change your online menu. You got to change your, if you use third parties, you got to change that menu. You got to change your printed menu. You got to, I mean, it's insane how much. Mm -hmm. Goes into just changing just one Just changing thing. anything. Right. Yeah. So, you mm. know, if anything, I'm trying to take stuff away. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not trying to Keep add. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you go about making a pizza, because like, you know, sometimes uh, you guys got gluten free also. We do. Uh, was that a big experiment also? Because I know sometimes gluten free bread and stuff like that isn't the best sometimes, but it, they're getting better. And sometimes now you can't even tell. Right. We did experiment at first. We would make, we, we tried making it. Mm -hmm. you know and uh you know our restaurants are pretty small we don't have a, a ton of storage you know oh, okay. and so we decided that and and we didn't really know how much to make for the demand that we would have for it so that's one thing that we get that is frozen oh, okay. so we get it from a local bakery mm. um right here in el segundo and uh but it is a frozen like pre partially baked gluten-free crust and okay. then we just cook it in a pan like its own pan so it doesn't touch the stone where Got all the flowers you. but you know we're in a place where flo you know flour is flying all over right, the place so if you're right. super gluten intolerant it's mm. not you know you're you're gonna get some got you got you you know hey but at least you're offering it it's good yeah. yeah you know we got a lot of people a lot of people who are like you know keto or sure, if they're on sure. some special diet they'll mm -hmm. we did a um pizza with neen williams once yeah, yeah it was rowdy he called it the we called it the lean jesus because we have the meat jesus which is like uh it's, you know it's loaded up with meat on it but uh so the lean jesus was that it was like a cauliflower or whatever Ooh. and then it had all the meat on it because mm. it was a keto deal that sounds Amazing. really good i'd probably go with that one I'm so hungry. Are you keto? Uh, I try to stay away from carbs, like eating them. I'll drink them all the time, yeah. but um, but I, I don't try not to eat it anymore. I, I, I love carbs. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, me too. Oh. Can we order Papa John's or something? Man, I'm <laughs> starving. <laughs> this guy's <That's> disrespectful, bro. <laughs> that was good. Come on, I'm joking. That's cool. Come on. I got my gift card here. Got it. Man, thank you, Solomon. You're welcome. We got some stuff for you, though. Can we give you some stuff to take home? We got some if you nine, nine Club swag. <laughs> yeah. Kelly, if you would do the honors, yeah. bro. Yeah, what size? XL. XL? Okay. So we got the four Pizzanistas already going. We got one more in the works. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, is that it? Just one more in the works? Yeah, right now. Right in, now. In March. Yeah. Okay. Oh, in March. Well, yeah, it's coming up. Literally, yeah. Mm-hmm. You should try to bring that to the valley. Oh. Is it too close? I don't know. Or is the valley off limits? What would you no, think? No, <laughs> no, it's not too close. I mean, we could do them close. Yeah. Yeah. Venice. What would you? Yeah, let's get one here in Venice. No, maybe it's so expensive here. I know. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but you know, Pizza I don't know, shop I don't know if the I don't know if the governor of California watches this, but you know, this is a tough state to be in business no doubt you know so yeah. it's you know part of the reason why we haven't scaled even more is because it's so challenging to be a small business in california right i i, I couldn't even we'd have to do a separate podcast on that mm -hmm. totally it's just too hard yeah you know we're you know small business is like enemy of the state you know because we employ people yeah you know? isn't that crazy yeah it's so bizarre it's, so bizarre it's hard you know it's really hard so you know, there's a lot of things to consider before starting and operating a business here. I mean, we're just a podcast. We feel the effects of it because we're a business. Yeah. You know, but I'm sure brick and mortar is even, oh my gosh. Well, when you're dealing with food too. Yeah. 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 To be a retail is one thing, but food, you know, and uh, 
Yeah, it's 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 tough. Listen, everybody out there, go support Pizza Nista. Please do. Yes. Come down to his two locations here in Los Angeles. There's not even really a good pizza spot on this side of town, other than Abbott's. Abbott's is good. I like it there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really trash. Yeah, I mean, I think it's all right. I think I don't haven't been eating pizza lately, but I'm. I mean, pizza. You know, good pizza when it's bad is good. You know, depending (laughs) on depending on. You know, it's very true. I mean, depending yeah, on your yeah. state of being, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, right. I mean, even when pizza's bad, you know, it's good. I mean, we buy at home, we buy uh, Trader Joe's, you know, they make a pizza. Yes. It's four bucks. Yes. You know, it's like a family size one. Mm-hmm. I make that. Yeah. I love that Those Trader Joe's great. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in the oven for nine minutes. You know, but, you know, the thing that's different with coming to Pizza Nista is like, you know, we're, you know, one of the things that we really talk about a lot is hospitality, you know? So mm-hmm. we're really mm-hmm. big on talking about that with our staff, uh, demonstrating it, not to our staff, but just being real people with our staff and like there being um, them experiencing the hospitality from management and ownership, right? Mm-hmm. So then that gets extended to our guests. Sure. You know, so that that to us you know is the biggest differentiating factor and of course you know we have good food you know from what people have told us with reviews and all that stuff and the fact that we have repeat guests coming oh yeah so um you know you can buy cheap food places you know but you know we're trying to build a a place a brand and then it's an experience right for sure and we have things that we're doing you know that are a lot different than most brands like we have um in late uh what is it late mm, spring early summer like we have a collaboration drop in with uniqlo oh no way oh, yeah, yeah wow. so we're gonna be you know you're gonna see pizza nista in like i don't know they have a lot of 2500 stores wow. yeah there's one here at the promenade yeah yeah so we we're excited about that okay you know? um and well, what a, kind of bit what kind of business is this it's apparel yeah. apparel it's yeah. a big apparel very yeah. big yeah mm. you know so we're we're aiming to like continue in the tradition of doing collaborations with brands and that's one mm-hmm. of the things i'm excited about with the skate shop is that you know we've done over 100 collaborations since we opened and anytime there was product involved we never had a meaningful way to merchandise it it was always mm. like very awkward you know where we had stuff to buy right right? so now you know like i've already talked to some brands that we're working on some projects where like our store can essentially be a pop-up where we do a collaboration and we get a uh, like a smu a special makeup that comes in there and now you know with a specific pro and a a brand and pizza nista now we have something special that we can offer that you can't get in every shop mm. you know what i'm saying right. whatever wow. happened to uh didn't we have some sort of collab kind of almost happen some pizza yeah i think we did i mean i i remember you guys did an event with adidas right yeah and it was on yes. fairfax or yeah. something at yeah. someone's store and i remember i was a guest yeah you know yeah. on that show yeah. and then uh we did a box yeah, yeah. actually box. yeah we yeah. did the nine club pizza yeah. box yeah i remember we still have one somewhere here yeah but there's no oh. pizza though. No, there's no pizza. That? Oh, Raj. Oh, mm. um, what yeah. was the pizza? Again? Well, maybe we'll. Do you guys? When you guys do the stop and chat, is that mm-hmm. here? Oh, yep. here we go. Roger's oh. got the. Oh, there we go. Oh, here's the box. Yeah. Look at this. Right, nine so Club. So sick. Yeah. The pizza nine nista. Yeah. What does it say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the pizza. Yeah. Look at pizza that. nine nista. That yeah. sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, you got your name on that, dude. <laughs> you guys stole it from our website, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't think Jerron was on the show then. No, no, no. no. This is like four. Before. This is like four. This is five actually years one ago. of my favorite boxes. Actually, it looks I think, so good. You know good. what? It came out clean. Look it came it really out did. so clean. Yeah, we should revisit this. Yeah, we need to get a pie in there. Oh yeah, that would be great. I think we did talk about meat that. lovers or something. Yeah, let's go. D- didn't Roger want like honey on the? Uh, that was that's on what, the crust. That's on what, the crust. What, that's what did uh, broke the deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not mad at that. I think that would be nice. Yeah. It sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should have a pizza on. Yeah, on the menu. Man, let's go. Okay. Let's get it. Let's dig. Let's. You guys better figure out what's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do good, a, good luck with that. Can we do a side salad too? Like a little just for I. You want to do a nine it's club good. deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah there it is. Okay. 
There yeah. it is. You get a little salad on the side. Yeah, for do Kelly. a little slice and a little, little salad. A <laughs> little packet of honey and a packet of ranch. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So we, you know what? We could do it like that. You open the box. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So get it open. And then we have a little thing right here. Oh, Ooh, a little, a little side little of thing. Oh, okay. It has this, oh. the ranch, the honey, and then. Oh, my God. I'm starving right that now. That sounds A really little good. cold pack for your salad over there. Okay. <laughs> so that, that part of the pizza will be soggy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What about like cinnamon twists or something? Do we have any? We like, could do we that. Yeah. We've done that before. You've done that? Okay. Yeah. Love cinnamon twists. Yeah. So we do a little nine club pack. Ooh, a little to go this pack. Mm -hmm. Really, I like this. What about oh, uh? What's, oh, I'm blanking. What's the pizza of the inside? Uh, calzone. 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 Do you guys do calzones? No. Oh. <laughs> we could. We <laughs> <just don't. laughs> you didn't want to really shut you, you know, down that's there. A, you know, the thing is, it's <laughs> like you know. We could, right? Just like In N Out could make a chicken sandwich, I'm sure. sure. Yeah, they're yeah, not sure. doing it. Right. This is right. so true. You know. I don't think that would be so weird at this point. Oh, that would be, that's never gonna happen. Yeah, no, they're no. done. They're, it's like they're, reaching too far on that one. Yeah, it's just settle down. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, you make great food, so we Yeah. Probably, yeah. I can't go I can't wait to use this gift card. Yeah. So bummed you guys are closed today. <laughs> so you guys are closed on Mondays. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Hope Monday is that. just cleaning. Okay. Uh, prepping for the week. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. We have one of our staff, Esperanza. She's great. She actually comes in on Mondays. She alternates between stores, and she takes apart all of our refrigeration. Like not not takes it apart, but mm. you know takes the covers off and gets in. Like there's condensers and coils and all that stuff's got to be cleaned. Oh, okay. And that's what you know. That's why refrigerators go bad is because those get caked up with you know they don't whatever. get taken care of. Yeah. Mm. So we wow. we take care of that stuff weekly. Nice, yeah. nice. I love it. Got to preserving the product. They got a good operation going on mm -hmm. over there doing our best dude solomon first of all thank you so much yeah, pleasure thank you, thank you. we so appreciate good, you everyone. thank you guys thanks for everything you did in skateboarding as well yes 1000 percent. yep i did my best <laughs> <laughs> there's a yeti keep hydrated my, oh, nice. my man there here's he a uh, yeti nine club okay. little thing right here uh we got a nine club mug maybe if you you know put some little stickers uh nine club stickers up around old pizza nista all right get people uh get people involved nine club hoodie thank you when it gets cold i'm gonna need that tonight yeah it's a little chilly out. out of there and then uh uh nixon gave us a bunch of watches so oh, we're, wow. we're spreading the love over here so here's a uh nixon mullet oh we mentioned the mullet earlier mm -hmm. with the, <laughs> the flaps. Yeah. jeff wendell yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, silver and teal Nixon watch for you, wow, my man. That's really nice. Yeah, Thank you. Go. Yeah, they gave us a bunch of stuff, so we're passing on the love. That's really sweet. Yeah. But again, Solomon, thank you so much. Fair come enough. by any anytime you want. Come back, please, and do a little stop and chat with us and hang out. It'd be amazing. That would right. be awesome. I, I, I want to hear more stories. Oh, we got plenty. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't go for five hours. <laughs> oh, we're good. We're, this still, is a no. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. <laughs> 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 keep going. <laughs> You have any more portal party stories? Oh no, I don't. <laughs> I'm glad I only have that one. Yeah, that's a good one. I'd rather just have that one than a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, I got plenty of portal party <laughs> stories to tell. <laughs> Solomon, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, you. Appreciate oh, it. Hell yeah. Awesome. Very um, grateful. Thank you. Um,